on the track. And we have some big action in the field as well. A little bit overcast here in London today, but I guarantee nothing will dampen the enthusiasm or the atmosphere when things get going over the next half an hour or so. We've got a few medal presentations before the action kick starts, but it really will be an enthralling evening. Plenty to entertain over the next few hours. So here's a confirmation if you're planning what you're up to for the next few hours. Women's javelin final will be the first action to start in half an hour. First round of the women's two, the men's pole vault final. Will Reno La Villani finally win the only title missing from his collection? Women's four hurdle semis, women's shot put qualification, and three finals. The men's 3,000 meter steeplechase, Evan Yeager of the United States, hoping to become the first non Kenyan born winner since 1987. Men's 800, wide open, Nigel Amos, the Botswanan, will fancy his chances. And then the men's four. No Isaac McQuala, but we have the reigning world and Olympic champion and world record holder, Wade Van Niekerk, who will hope to bring the evening to a dramatic, glorious conclusion. I'm Rob Walker, alongside me, Steve Ovet and Catherine Merry, and I can assure you they are as up for this evening as I am. Good evening. <laughs> and that's quite hard to do, isn't it, Steve? Because Rob's as excited as we are, probably always just a little bit more. But what wonderful action we've had. Again, ending tonight with three really big finals on the track. There's a shot of the warm-up area. The athletes are coming in. It is a bit chilly, though, as Rob said. 19, partly cloudy here in London this evening. But the athletes, well, they're back in town. They're back in the stadium. And as Rob said, we're ready to rock and roll. Oh, we certainly are. And obviously, I'll be looking for well. One man that's got uh, a little bit to look forward to in the 4 by 100 metres, Usain, just telling them, you know, how to do it. They've been out there practising all day, the Jamaicans. I think they're pretty keen to stamp themselves back in authority against the Americans in that 4 by one It's going to be another tough race, though. It's not going to be a foregone conclusion. And one man is really enjoying himself. Going through the moves yet again, Usain. So from the track onto the field, Sam Kendricks, the world leader in the men's pole vault, a member of the six-meter club now, the American. That men's pole vault final, 7.35 UK time this evening. It's a chance for him to potentially get another medal for the USA. And as Rob mentioned, Renola Villani looking for the only gold medal he hasn't got in his collection. Two Olympic champions in one shot there on the right, Christian Taylor. Triple jump Olympic champion, qualified with ease last night. So he'll be back for the triple jump final. Christian, though, is going for three world titles in a row. Renaud Lavillani is looking for that one medal that he's got missing. But here's a young star, Armand Duplantis, known as Mondo. 17 years old, 5 metres and 90. One of the best athletes in the world. 5 metres and 90 guys at 17 years old. He's been breaking world age records since the age of seven in the pole vault. <laughs> what a talent. Yeah, he is. He, obviously, there's his father there also. I mean, they're four, what is it, 580 volter himself. Sorry. So, really, at the end of the day, uh, it's going in the family sort of tradition, isn't it? He's quite tall boy, though, isn't he, for 17? That is an amazing record, 585. Shaughnessy Barber, it's been a really difficult season for Shaughnessy, as it has for Renault Le Villani. Kendricks has been the man, he's been the standard bearer so far this year, Catherine. But Barber, well, he's the defending champion and he will be desperate to win it again. But Kendricks surely is the favourite. Well, indeed. And there's another athlete, Wojciechowski of Poland. It's going to be a great competition. We've got the last three world champions taking part in this men's pole vault final later. Wojciechowski, he won it in 2011. Holtz Depper, the German. He's also in the final. We've just seen Sean Barber as well, the defending champion. And that's Wojciech Lysek of Poland. He's now a member of the exclusive six-meter club. He popped over that indoors earlier this year. So all the pole vaulters, ready and poised, and the French fans... The athletes walked in about 10 minutes ago, Rob, to get their run-ups ready. And the French are in town supporting their big star. 
they're, they're desperate for him to finally win this and it is almost mystifying when you think how dominant he's been for so many years that it's just been the one that has so far eluded him but it's been a very very difficult season for La Villani so we will have to wait and see whether the mercurial Frenchman the Olympic champion from 2012 can turn it on well one woman who absolutely turned it on in the 100 meters Tori Bowie champion and in some style over the one begins her campaign to go for the 200 meters Shawnee Miller Weibo she's going in the 400 meter final tomorrow night and what a final that will be but look at that 21 91 she said a new Bahamian national record over the two earlier this season so clearly fancies she could double up but over the two and the four rather than the one and the two that Tori Bowie is attempting Wade van Niekerk trying to do the same. And what a great bronze medal for Daphne Skippers in the 100 meters. It hasn't been a perfect season for the Dutch woman. She starts the beginning of what would be a title defense for her. She stormed to gold two years ago, but has yet to reproduce that kind of time and those kind of fireworks so far. Been a good season for the female sprinters from the Ivory Coast, Mari Jose Talu. Buoyant after a great year so far, and she looks completely and utterly relaxed. Seven heats in the women's two. First three plus three fastest losers advancing to the semis. And the very distinctive Michelle Lee IE. Impressive 22 5 this season. Got her own baseball cap there. It's a hive of activity over on the warm up track. And how good to see Dina Asher Smith back to health as well as uh, some form it has been a very very difficult time with injuries for her but she's since she's got back on the track she does seem to have regained a little bit of momentum so she will hope to add her name to the list of qualifiers for the semi-finals and those women's heats in the two start in around about half an hour's time Well, one man that won't be competing tonight, but taking some selfies, Mo Farah. Obviously relaxing and maybe doing a little bit of training before the 5,000 metres gets underway. But so far, the only British medal for the team here in these World Championships. Things are a little bit slim at the moment in that department, and they'll be waiting perhaps for another gold. Well, you'd be hard-pressed to bet against the man. And he's enjoying himself. I don't know who he's talking to. He's talking to maybe one of the members of his family there. Wait and see. Maybe one of his children on FaceTime. That's the view from inside the stadium. And this is the, well, it's not the call room for action. This is the call room for the medal ceremonies. And it looks as though, you can't quite see it clearly there, but that looks as though Castor Semenu in the foreground. You've got the bronze by just edging out Great Britain's Laura Muir, watching a rerun of that extraordinary women's 15 from late last night. Certainly was. Maybe she thinks if you watch it long enough, she might get the silver medal. But, yeah, she left it too late, really, Castor Semenu. And a disappointing run, I suppose, for a, a lot of these athletes. It was a very slow race. And in the end, uh, well, it was really disappointing, I suppose, for a lot of athletes. But Semenu getting the bronze medal. Yes, great racing for the women's 15. We saw the men waiting backstage there for the presentation of the high hurdles. And what an incredible field event duel we had, Steve, between Rojas of Venezuela and the charismatic Ibarguen from Colombia. They took each other right to the very edge. And it did turn out to be as intriguing a rivalry as we hoped it would be before the championships. An extraordinary fight. Absolutely unbelievable. It went one way, then another, then it went back again. The gold medal switching all the time, right until the very last jump. Robert Gesta de Mello, IWF Council Member, will be presenting the medals. And the bronze, bronze medal Kazakhstan, went to Olga Raptakova of Kazakhstan. 1477. 
while she was watching really as the rest of the action was going on in front of her by almost uh, 20 centimeters or so silver medalist representing Colombia and the silver medalist the Olympic champion Katrina Abagwe from Colombia her distance 1489 and what a competition she really was enjoying it over there the crowd were loving every single minute of it she seemed to know that it was a competition to save her because she really was enjoying it lovely personality beautiful performance very very smooth lovely jump but in the end for the first time Yulia Ross of Venezuela just tipped in Bargwen by two centimeters 14.91 the celebration that she had afterwards is something to watch it really was she did not stop jumping around for at least five minutes or so and I'm told by Catherine one of our co-commentators is that Yesterday, she said if she wins, she's going to change the color of her hair. Well, it was pink yesterday, I think, and it's green today. So she did Mesdames just that. Ladies and gentlemen, the national anthem of Venezuela. Some great finals here at these World Championships, but for me, last night that triple jump was the highlight. It really was a fantastic competition between two great athletes, and it was conducted in a great spirit, Steve. They both seem to be reveling in having the stadium to themselves, and on a on a wider note, really positive news for Venezuela at a time when the country desperately needs it. Hopefully, Yulimar Rojas has made everybody back home very proud. A poignant victory for the young woman. And I'm sure there will be many more installments in that great rivalry. Fantastic turnout again this evening. Just looking around whilst everyone was standing during that anthem. It might look a tiny bit bare just there. Remember, that's where quite a lot of the officials sit, and they'll be backstage. But from our perspective, looking around the stadium, it is a very, very good turnout. The next ceremony is for the men's 110-metre hurdles. And of the thousands of Jamaican fans who've been disappointed in the two sprint events they were hoping they're relying on their olympic champion to deliver ladies and gentlemen the medal ceremony for the 110 meters hurdles no mama cloud there did it's been a long time since a high hurdler has won a world title after taking the olympic crown About 20 years by my reckoning so it was a wonderful achievement by him. Victor Lopez, IAAF council member, awarding the three medalists. And the bronze medal, Balaz Baji of Hungary. The first medal for Hungary here in London. Hungary's first ever medal in this event, 13.28 seconds. He qualified through to the final 
very confidently and was rewarded with a world championship bronze medal, a super run. And he managed to pip the defending champion running as an authorized neutral athlete. The Russian Sergei Shabenkov, silver medal for him, 13.14 seconds, always smiling is Shabenkov. Won the title two years ago in Beijing. Delighted to pick up a silver medal here in London. But the Olympic champion became the world champion. 13.04 seconds, picked up the big goal for Jamaica, Omar McLeod. The first Jamaican gold here in London. His family are here. He's absolutely delighted. A sub-13 second high hurdler, a sub-10 second 100 meter runner. The first ever high hurdler to achieve that feat. The base speed and the technique was there. And the gold went to Jamaica. Well, the smile says it all for Omar McLeod. He's talking about flirting with the sprint events a bit more potentially next season, the one and 200 meters, and why not when you're a sub 10 second 100 meter runner? But it really was a good race. Jamaica up and running in gold medal terms. Yes, they needed it, didn't they? And after disappointment for Usain Bolt in the 100 and then Elaine Thompson in the women's 100, Omar McLeod delivering as he did in Rio. And he looked a little bit tight, I thought, in the heats. He got better in the semis and improved once again in the high hurdles. Be interesting to see what he could do over the 100 flat next year. Maybe come back giving it the big one over the hurdles in 2019 ahead of what he hoped to be a title defence in Doha. But for now, he can enjoy his celebrations and I fancy there might be a couple of beers heading Omar McLeod's way at some stage soon. He'll enjoy those celebrations, that's for sure. Well, what a race to round off the fourth evening. It was almost ridiculous because with about 300 to go, even towards the home straight, to be honest, you still had no idea who was going to win the race. Great Britain's Laura Muir took it out, then it slowed on the second lap. And the beginning of the drama was when Sifan Hassan went from the back to the front with about 6.50 to go. And then there was all sorts of drama on the last lap. It's one of those races, you could rerun it five consecutive days and have five different outcomes. It, was, it really was an absorbing, extraordinary race. Ahmed, Carl Carver, Malboom, delighted, I'm sure, to be making the presentation. So, breaking British hearts, literally on the line by seven hundredths of a second. The four-time global 800-meter champion from South Africa, Castor Semenya.
her first global outing over 1500 meters she's on the podium with a bronze and will hope to produce a golden moment for south africa on sunday in the women's 800 meter final left it late on the podium once again and in terms of tactical awareness, what a fantastic athlete from the United States. World champion in Daegu, bronze in Moscow, oh sorry, silver in Moscow, bronze in Rio last year, silver on the world championship podium once again. She found the tiniest of gaps on the inside when Hassan drifted right. Jenny Simpson is a world championship medalist once again. been a good championship for the Americans. Not a surprise bronze in the women's marathon as well with Craig coming through. But what about this young woman from Kenya? She has quite literally won every title available to her. World youth and junior champion in her younger years, Commonwealth champion, Olympic champion, and now world champion. The collection is complete. She held it together whilst all around her faltered. So many great achievements for one so young, and surely that means there are many more still to come. And yet again, she hears the Kenyan national anthem. wrong in that race, she did everything she possibly did, and as uh, we said, in the Savannah Sand, put the front down with 200 meters to go, she followed up, and then just uh, keyed off her to come home with that wonderful gold medal, great round from Jennifer Simpson, much admire her technique and her tactics in races, much the same as Mark Sedjevic, who will be running in the men's 500 meters a bit later in the competition, the two Americans, I think, have got their heads really well placed for places in the medal. Was that one of the best women's 1500s you've seen? I, I, I've i seen great races, but in terms of quality, the, the talent that was lining up there was probably one of the best I've ever seen, yes. Mesdames et messieurs, les médaillés, les champions du monde. Once again, your world championship... So, on that occasion, Kenya, the United States and South Africa on the podium. So this would be an appropriate moment, just to remind you, how the medal table stands and it's looking very good indeed at the moment for the united states as i said it's not just the sprints where they've been dominant silver there for simpson bronze for crag in the marathon their first medal in the women's marathon since 1983 kenya second ethiopia will certainly believe they have chances to add to their gold medal hall remember the kenyans are going in the steeplechase later this evening venezuela Good to see them up. Gold for Rojas, got a bronze as well. The Jamaicans are now on the golden trail. They'll have great chances in the sprint relays. One gold for Great Britain, courtesy of Mo Farah, of course. 13 teams, I'm reliably informed so far, have won gold medals. Tom Walsh getting the New Zealanders off to a good start. No Valerie Adams here. She's She was here earlier on, but not competing. She's gone home. She's seven months pregnant, so no gold from her. So, 
that's the medal ceremonies wrapped up for now we turn our attention to a fabulous evening here in the stadium and we start with the women's javelin well there's the uh, world record held by Spotakova that's a fantastic 72 26 back in 208 well, she's here she's coming back into form the double Olympic champion but the competition is also very strong Sarah Kovac the Olympic champion from Rio is also in this and the defending champion Katarina Molitar so it's not going to be straightforward and there's been some very good throws already in qualifying conditions though I said it before pretty cold here in the stadium not much wind it's questionable whether the uh, javelin throws like throwing into a wind or with a wind but uh, I think at the moment it's pretty sort of cool and calm down there at trackside it is it's decent conditions as the fanfare welcomes all the athletes in this women's javelin final it's going to be fascinating Steve you've got Kolak who won the Diamond League circuit in Lausanne with a world leading throw in a national record beating Spitakova the world record holder but Spitakova is coming back in form and is throwing her best for what four or five years now I think I think Spitakova usually gets a big throw out at the beginning she went from the competitions I've seen anyway and I think that's her technique frighten the rest of the competition and then after that they have to respond well Nuhu Yilu second in the world championships led going into the final in Beijing but that was beaten in the final throw of the competition by Monitar Ratesh of Slovenia seventh in London Olympics just but just now moving to the camera Kaladovic the European champion from Belarus and there, this is the Olympic champion, Sarah Kovac. She was a big surprise with that uh, win, but she set the Croatian records in qualifying for that final, so she shouldn't have been too surprised. Kirsty Lee Roberts of Australia, and a personal best this year, 46-38. And here, the great Barbora Spotakova. Well, as we said, she's coming back into form, and you wouldn't underestimate this woman. And Elizabeth Bedell of Canada the Pan American Games champion and one of the other good Chinese throwers here Ling Wei Li of China personal best of 64-10 and then Adis Helms Otia she became the first Atlantic woman to reach the final of an Olympic field event wonderful performance from her and then from Turkey Ida Tuksu sharp improvement this year to 67-21 She's just moved into the senior ranks. Another of the Chinese athlete, Xing Yi Lu, the Chinese record holder, with that distance of 66 and 47. And then making up the 12 women, Katrina Molitor, the defending world champion. So there's the 12 women. This will be the first event starting this evening and the first final. The defending champion, the Olympic champion and the world record holder. Hopefully it'll be as fiery and as exciting as that women's triple jump last night. Get two or three of the athletes putting one out there early doors. That really is up for grabs, as you say, Steve. Yeah, I think it is. And I think no one is a, an absolute favourite, although there are people, uh, sorry, women in this event, which could obviously produce a very big throw right from the very beginning conditions as I said you see all the athletes there still having their tracksuits on still keeping warm as much as possible that's going to be a big factor for the javelin obviously they're out there for a long long time and pretty hard to keep warm so maybe the first round is when the big throws will come let's wait to see well Huey Lou now Second in the world championships. New Asian record here actually. 67-59 when she was first in the qualifiers. Big Chinese contingent here shouting on all their athletes and all the events. Oh, it's a good throw, dropping slightly. Just below the 65, or in between the 65 to 60 meters.
third in the world of distance this year. So it's not up to a usual standard, but it's early days in the uh, javelin throw. There it is, 62-71. Well, obviously, she's in first place. It's the first throw. But we'll have to wait until the uh, first round goes through before we get a true picture of what's developing in this javelin. Martina Rataj now, seventh in London. She had a good throw, actually, qualifying 65-64, which is the best of the season so far. So she's in good shape. Goes up. All about the same distance again. Just over the 60-meter uh, line. We must emphasize now that... Uh, even though sometimes those lines have been slightly off in terms of uh, us watching it, because of sometimes we put the um, graphics lines on as well, they are now absolutely accurate. So we can be sure that the throws that we see, the distance that we get, will be absolutely 100%. Well, there it is, 61.05 off seat, just keeping her in second place at the moment. Kaladovic now, the European champion. She's had a good season, really. She was first in Eugene, first in the Belarusian Cup, then first in Henglo, so she's been really in form. Just 62.58. Well, the qualifying distance is really not that sort of indicative of what they're going to do because it's just the distance they have to qualify for. So the throw. Yes, it's slightly better than the throws we've seen so far, closer to that 65. Kolodovic, European champion last year, Steve. Didn't qualify for Beijing two years ago. Well, that throw looks as if it could be round about the best throw we've seen so far out of the three. They are 63.04. Not much going on in the stadium at the moment, so we're concentrating on the javelin. There is a massive crowd already here. I think almost all the seats, I think, rather completely full. They are. It's a, it's a fantastic turnout. Now, what an interesting thrower here, because Kolak was the surprise Olympic champion last year, and she's the best thrower in the world so far this year just ahead of Spitakova. Now here she comes. Oh, a lower trajectory now. That's gone way below her best. Yeah, she'll step over the line for that. Not good at all. Well, remember, we've got to take the S eight best throwers out of this uh, group of 12 to go through to an, an extra three throws. So it's not exactly the best way to start for Polak. Percy Lee Roberts, the third in the Commonwealth Games. The Australian, is, the Australian competition is much like the uh, American competition. It's very early in the season, so to come here after an early season prep is pretty difficult for most of the Australians. Well, that's a good throw around about the midway point again between the 60-65. Uh, The best this year is 64.38, so I think that's a little bit short of that. Australian champion. Actually born in London, South Africa, and uh, coach Mike Barber there. Right. So now we come to the, perhaps the big throw of the first round. Barbara Spotakova. Double Olympic champion, coming back, as Catherine mentioned, into form this year. If she can get a big throw in here, it will set the cat amongst the pigeons, it really will. Coming in. It's gone high, and it's coming down pretty sharp. 
So, again, in that mid-range. Doesn't look too happy with it. Such longevity, Steve. She's been around at the top for what seems like an eternity. Started out as a heptathlete 17 years ago. Now 36 years of age. She's had some big wins on the tour so far, but more well, work to do. Well, I think in terms of throwing, it doesn't necessarily mean that uh, age is a problem. In fact, it sometimes makes you stronger. And here we go now. The next thrower is Lido. Pan American champion and uh, the Canadian champion. This is the fifth title as the Canadian champion. She's very, very experienced. It's going up high, but again, dropping. The lack of wind, I think, is not carrying these javelins as far as uh, perhaps we would like, or they would like anyway. So this competition could be quite interesting because of that, I think. D12, so that keeps her well back at the moment in fifth place. So we will keep a close eye on the women's javelin final. Meantime, a busy night on the track is about to start with seven heats of the women's 200 metres. Cracking final over 100 where Tori Bowie produced a fantastic run and we were shocked that Elaine Thompson came up well short of the medals Thompson opting not to do the 200 here there's the defending champion Daphne Skippers she goes in the first of the heats she's out in lane six so the first round of the women's 200 meters quite a fresh blustery evening here in the Olympic Stadium tonight <laughs> Daphne Skippers, that championship record, third fastest in history when she won the title two years ago. First three plus three fastest losers will go through to the semis on Thursday. Confirmation of the lineup in the first of the seven heats in the women's two. Daphne Skippers in lane six, the big name here. Watch Williams of Great Britain in two. Gaither of Bahamas and Williams on the outside for Jamaica will hope to make an impact. And there is Jodine Williams, third in the Jamaican champs. Here's Tinya Gaither, semi-finalist last year and at the World Juniors back in 2010. Good runner and she'll need to be on her game tonight because this woman will be storming up into her running. Daphne Skippers, bronze in the 100, the defending champion, got the silver behind Elaine Thompson last year, and she'll be buoyed after that bronze in the one. Riley Day, Australia, Maria Belimpaksaki of Greece, Kielpa Sinka of Poland, and on the inside, Great Britain's Bianca Williams, Commonwealth bronze medalist over the two in Glasgow three years ago. Great reception for the Britain. Semi-finalist over the 100 in Beijing. First of seven heats then. Watch Williams in two. Skippers, the defending world champion in six. Gaither of Bahamas, seven. And Jody and Williams of Jamaica on the outside in eight. Skippers has produced the sixth fastest time in the world this year, yet to duck under 22 seconds, but I wonder how much confidence she took from that bronze in the one. <laughs> Clean start. Barely evenly away, and now Skippers making up ground on Gaither outsider. Williams trying to come through on the inside, but what a bend from Daphne Skippers already easing down. Gaither coming through in second place. Remember, it's the first three. Skippers, Gaither, 
and it may well have been the Greek athlete who came through for the third spot, 22-64, big, powerful performer. It was comfortable and it was impressive. Well, it was, wasn't it? She was asked in the press conference after the 100 metres, you are doing the 200, aren't you, Daphne? And she said, of course. European record, 21.63 when she won the title a couple of years ago. As you'd expect, nice and controlled from the Dutch athlete. She really pushed round the bend and she actually took a first look over her shoulder. We'll see this on the replay as she came immediately into the straight. You can see her there, smooth, hugging the inside line. Make, there you go, making sure she doesn't transgress the line. And she's looking round, nice and controlled. The Greek athlete, as you mentioned, Robin, lane number four came storming through to grab an automatic qualifying spot away from the British athlete Williams in two. But no, Daphne Skippers, the bronze medal in the 100, as you say, and stepping up in this 200-metre distance, not sub-22, as you mentioned, this season. That is going to be needed to get a medal in this women's 200 metres. But the Dutch start, nice and controlled there, not even out of second or third gear as she swung into the straight. Question for you then, Catherine, as someone who's been on the podium at the Olympic Games, do you think that bronze will have just given her a little bit of confidence, bearing in mind it hasn't been a perfect season for her so far? Of course, any major championship medal gives you a bounce in your step, and she loves the 200 metres. That was nice and controlled, wasn't it? Meanwhile, back, the uh, javelin is still underway. This is Lingwei Li of China. The lead at the moment, held by uh, Kaladovic, 63.04. Well, oh, she screamed, it's gone out well, but just over that 60 meter mark. I don't think that'll threaten the lead, as I said, of Kaladovic. But it's not a bad throw. moment as if most of the throws of early on in this first round are just over that 60 meter mark not too far over either there it is 61 81 while well, she's in third place of Turkey now oh screams screams they keep screaming well again about I'd say 61 62 Just looking at the scoreboard to see where she is in relation to the rest of the athletes here. Wow, she's getting excited. Let's just see what it is, let's see if she is. Wow, that's a good throw then. 61-81 again, she moves up into third. Smoothly done from Daphne Skippers in the first heat. Gaither from the Bahamas is also through. And Belim Pasake of Greece has taken the third automatic spot. Bianca Williams will have to wait and see. Javelin again. This is the lead lady. Tatiana Kaladovic, that's a 63.04. we go wow that's a lot better that's a very big throw those are the lines of the middle positions gold silver and bronze and that's gone well over that European champion fifth at the Olympics well that's gonna be really really close to uh, one of the final this throws we're gonna see here she's just having a quick look yeah Look at that, 64.05. Well, she sails and keeps a distance and place as the number one in the javelin. Oh, what can Kolak do now? Foul on the first throw. It was a disaster of the first throw, actually. She's talking herself into it. Olympic champion. That was a surprise. But can she actually consolidate that with a victory here? Let's have a look. Oh, it's gone, whoa, that's another big throw. 
Wow, well, that's surprise. The Olympics might not have been such a throw. There's the coach. Well, Kolak really has put uh, a big throw out there. Let's just wait and see how far. Well, as Rob mentioned, she is the world leader. It was a national record that she threw in Lausanne when she threw the national record and world leader, 68-43. Wow. 64-95, but it's not that far, but it looks as if it's far yeah. enough at the moment to take the lead. It certainly is. Well, back to the second of these heats of the women's 200 metres. Kambuji there, Switzerland in lane five. One of the fastest of the qualifiers. She was uh, third in the semi-final of 100 metres, so obviously coming from that into the final. The outside, obviously, one of the others to watch the multiple US collegiate champions, Kimberly Duncan. Second in their trials, running in the awkward lane eight there. In the inside of her, Barzolo of Portugal, then Cambucci. There she is in lane five. Third, as I said, in the semi finals, 100 meters, European bronze medal, 100 meters, the Swiss record holder, 60 and 100 meters. Victoria Rosa of Brazil, just inside of her, then uh, Paul Fram of South Africa. World Student Games champion at 400 metres, dropping down here to the shorter distance of the 200 metres. And on the inside, Filipina of Indonesia. Well, 24.94 for her personal best, maybe not really up to this sort of calibre, but at least she's here. So as we said before, the first three and the three fastest to the third to the semi-finals on Thursday. Going down to their marks, Filipina, Dal Freeman, Rosa, Kambunji, Azolo, and Duncan. Between them on the outside, Duncan going well of America. She might lead just coming off the bend. And on the inside, Kambunji coming well in the red vest there. So these two clear at the moment. Kambunji, I think, just slightly ahead. Coming through on the inside of her is Carl Freeman and uh, Rosa of Brazil. It looks like the American just taking it now. Duncan from Kambunji. And in third place, I think it was Rosa of Brazil. On the winning time. 24-74, not as fast as that first uh, heat, but it's not necessary, it's just about qualifying. Kambunji ran a good bend, actually, to put the American just under a little bit of pressure. As you said, decent performance from the Swiss athlete in the heats. Rosa won that battle for third. But a good bend from the semi-finalist last year in Rio. They're about level here. Then the American pulls away. Rosa came under a little bit of pressure from the South African, Palframan, but she did manage to hold on for that third spot. As you said, Steve, not quite as fast as skippers. Arguably not quite as impressive as skippers either. Oh, they're back. It's introduction time, a field event final, and it's the men's pole vault. This. They cheer now, Steve, every time these guys come, guys and girls come out to introduce a final. <laughs> it's the first time I've ever seen this sort of thing, and, and uh, also when they bring them out underneath the uh, cover as well. I think it's great. It's a bit of entertainment, isn't it? It's brilliant. Here's your lineup then. Wojta Lysek of Poland, equal fourth in Rio, a six-meter man. Curtis Marshall of Australia. World Junior Silver last year. Chang Rizhu of China, the Asian champion back in 2013, a 570 volter this season. Arnaud Art of Belgium, their national record holder. 
Armand Duplantis of Sweden, world junior record holder, world number three, 590 this season. Raphael Holtzdepper of Germany, world champion in 2013. The world leader from the US of A, Sam Kendricks. Olympic bronze last year, six meters outdoors this season. The defending champion from Canada, Sean Barber. 593 at his best, that was a couple of seasons ago. Ji Zhuao of China. Lifetime best this year, 570. Paweł Wojciechowski of Poland, the world champion back in 2011, in good form this season. The outright world record holder, a massive cheer for Renaud Lavilleni of France. He has world silver and three bronzes. Axel Chappelle of France follows his teammate in, the world junior champion in 2014. So the men's pole vault, oh, nice shot there, Sam Kendricks, Duplantis, high-fiving, fist-pumping, wishing each other lots of luck. And there's your full lineup once again. A really good vibe against the male, around in the male pole vaulting setup. And as I mentioned previously, when they were coming through in warm-up, the last three world champions are here. Wojtaszewski, Holtzdepper and Barber, and then the world record holder and the Olympic champion, Randola Lavillani, looking for the one medal that's missing. Men's pole board up and running, but back in the javelin, the world record holder is ready and poised. Plus Budakova now hopefully unleashing a bigger throw than uh, she's done before because Kolak is in the lead with 64.95. Oh, that's a good throw, it's gone high. Oh, that's gone very high and very long. Well, if that is to be the case, she looks like she's taken the lead. But she's happy. She knows she has. They can almost sense it when they let the javelin go that it's going to be a throw that's going to be remembered. And that one has gone. You can almost see it goes above the height of some of the stands there. You can judge it yourself. Let's have a look. There it is, 66, 76. Yeah. Moves her into the lead. No, I'm number one, she says. Yep. <laughs> There's a result of the second heat. Duncan coming through fairly comfortably, just ahead of Kambunji there. And Rosa just holding off Palfreman of uh, South Africa in third place for all important one, two, three in the second heat. And look who's in town. The world record holder, the Olympic champion, the defending world champion, over 400 metres, looking as though he hasn't got a care in the world. He will round off our programme tonight, and it is cold, so maybe, maybe it won't be a world record, but it could be and should be very fast. So on the track, back in the stadium, the next seat in the women's 200 metres. There's your lineup. Deja Stevens in lane number six, the world number five this year. The fastest in the field with 22.09 seconds. That's a lifetime best for the American. In lane number eight, the Lova Collio of Bulgaria. Semi-finalist here in the 100 metres, a double sprint finalist at the Athens Olympics back in 2004. Lane seven for Great Britain, Northern Ireland, the UK champion, Shannon Hilton. 22.94 this season. Deja Stevens of the USA. Seventh in Rio last year over this distance. The US champion in lane number six. There's Estela Garcia of Spain. Sanchez of the Dominican Republic in four. Ellen Nelson of Australia in three. Making sure the shoes are right and in place. Sasha Lee Forbes of Jamaica in lane two. Olympic relay silver after running in the heats in Rio last year. 22.71 this season for the 21-year-old. So heat number three, the first three, 
And the next three fastest to those semi-finals on Thursday. Stevens of the USA. The American starts in lane number six. athlete in lane seven Forbes of Jamaica going well as is Stevens in lane number six and Hilton for Britain in lane number seven but it's the American who'll sweep into the lead the first three guaranteed a place in the in the semi-finals Lalova Collio on the outside but America Bulgaria and Jamaica on the inside unofficially 22.91 seconds those three athletes guarantee a place in the semi-finals on Thursday but went to the form book when you've run 22.09. Although Stevens will be disappointed with her showing in the 100 meters. Didn't get anywhere near where she's ran this season in that event. But that was controlled by the American. Yes, it was a good run. But what was really impressive was the veteran, and I guess we do have to call her that, Lala Vicolio running furthest on the left-hand side. As you look there, the Bulgarian, who, as you said, Catherine, made a couple of big sprint finals back in Athens. She came through really well for second place. So what have we had? Skippers in 22.63, Duncan 22.74, and Stevens, I agree with you, probably feels as though she's got a point to prove because she ran something like 11.3 in the 100, and back in April, she'd got 11 on the nose. So she's gone off the boil a little bit. However, she looked pretty good there. Composed, focused, and we will see her again in the semi-finals coming up on Thursday so confirmation then Stevens through automatically with Lalova Collio and Forbes that was heat number three of seven in the women's 200 meters well this is the woman uh, that threw that to very good throw 61.81 can she go further now to Again, she loves to scream, and that, I think, is even better. That's a good throw. Just over what looks like the bronze medal position. But if that is the case, then she has thrown close to 63, maybe 64. Well, 67-21 this season. She's still just 20 years old. It's a national record that she's thrown for Turkey. Made a massive improvement up from 58 to 67 metres in her first year as a senior. She's clearly talented, and that's a good improvement. Well, 64-52, that moves her into third place. That's a great throw. Wow. Now you see Kaladovic, Belarus. First round throw of 63-04. Put her into fourth place, fourth place at the time. Another big long arm and it goes out just over the mark there. Red flag goes up though, unfortunately, so that's a disappointment. She fouls. She probably thought it wasn't good enough, so she fouled it herself. 64.04, 64.05 though in the second round. Like Kolak. The Olympic champion now. 64.95, she was in second place with that throw. Oh, again, pulled hard. Too hard, really. It came down too quickly. Red flag. Well, Kolak has had two fouls so far, but one big throw at 64.95. So her technique at the moment isn't really letting her produce the best results that we'd expect from her but I don't know let's wait and see well she's grateful for the 64.95 in the second round got herself in the top eight chance to compose herself for the three further throws well, there's a few more throws to go in this third round but I think that will secure her a place in the uh, next session of the javelin 
just debating for the... The women have a chance to choose which javelin they want, and they sometimes wait for the one that's been thrown previously, so that comes back. And Kelsey Lee Roberts of Australia, whose best throw was in the first round of 60-76, is just about to take the next throw. The Australian champion, third in that Commonwealth. Qualified with 63-70. She's in ninth place at the moment. She's living dangerously. She's got to throw around about 61 plus to get into that top eight. Oh, I don't think that's going to be good enough. Yeah, and I think she knows it too. She's thanking everybody. But that is the end of the competition for the Australians. Very difficult. It looks easy, the javelin, but it's very, very difficult to get the flight right, especially when there's no wind. It doesn't carry. Back on the track, the athletes are preparing for the fourth heat in the women's 200 metres. And it is quite chilly this evening. But as you can see, absolutely packed once again in the stadium. It really is superb to see these world-class athletes performing in front of so many people. Here's the lineup for the fourth heat in the women's 200 metres. Shawnee Miller-Rebo, the Olympic 400 metre champion, hoping to double up. We know she's in the 400 final. Here she is with her first outing over the half lap. Yana Couture of Ukraine on the outside, European under-23 bronze medalist. Simone Facey of Jamaica, semi-finalist in Rio last year. Second in the national championships over 1 and 200 metres. Been around a long time. Sixth in this final in Berlin. Toi Avisil, Papua New Guinea, goes in six. And here is Shawnee Miller-Webo. The second fastest woman in the world this year over the 200 bearing in mind she's olympic champion over the four new national record holder for the bahamas sada williams the barbados national champion made the world junior final last year still yet to turn 20. kl clark of trinidad and odion the world junior champion last year from bahrain Formerly a representative of Nigeria. So, Miller Weibo starts in lane five. We know how good she is over the 400 metres. She's also pretty useful over the two. Facey in seven for Jamaica. Clark of Trinidad in three. And Odion of Bahrain in two. That's Facey, first three into the semis. So they are up and away in this fourth heat. Simone Facey running well, still waiting for the move from Miller Weibo, who takes a little while to get into her running. Now starting to come through. Odion on the inside for Bahrain and Miller Weibo just loping away from Facey. Miller Weibo, Facey and Odion take the three spots. 22-7-0, barely out of breath. Didn't really have to pressure herself out of the blocks, but when she swept round that corner, Catherine, and got those long legs moving, she was poetry in motion. She's beautiful to watch. She really is. Facey ran well as well automatically through, 22.98 seconds. But Shawnee miller Weibo looking to expel no energy, if possible, with course of that 400-metre final tomorrow. But she has everything. She has sub-22 second clocking for 200 metres. She's the Olympic champion over 400. It was a decent start by her, to be fair. She's such a tall, statuesque athlete. Facey was going well on the outside at this point. 
was a good time to say congratulations from us all to Shelley Ann Fraser Price, birth of her son today, former world champion in this event, of course. So Facey got through, but look at that. She's Usain Bolt esque for me, Miller Weibo. She's tall, she's rangy, and she's relaxed. And she looked so strong there. There was so much more to come. Fascinating to have. I love the 200 because you've got the one lap specialists stepping down, and then you've got the explosive power of the 100 meter runners moving out to the two. And there they are meeting in the middle. That was, I know it wasn't the quickest of the races we've seen so far, but that was arguably the most impressive, wasn't it? It was. And you talk about meeting in the middle, Miller Weibo, of course, going for that 200 400 double, and the likes of Bowie and Tolu trying to do the 1 and 200 double, meeting in the middle. Miller Weibo, very, very impressive. Simone Facey and Odion take the other automatic spots. I don't think that time in fourth will be good enough for Kashur to go through as a fastest loser. Ming Wei Li of China. Sixth place for that uh, 63.01. Asian champion now coming in. Oh, that's, a, that's gone high, and it's gone a long, long way. Wow. She'll be really pleased with that. Well, the coach is standing up. The screen was there, the trajectory was there, the power was there, and the javelin went a long, long way. This is huge, Steve. Her personal best is five years old, at just over 65 metres. Well, I think that's going to be smashed. Yeah. This is a great throw at these competitions. She's going to be really pleased. And there it is, look, 66-25, the personal best in second position. Wow. That was one out of the blue, really. Now we're coming to Suzu of Turkey. She was, uh, well, she was in third position, but she's been moved down now to fourth. This young Turk, 64, 52. What can she do? It's gone out. It's gone a long way, but it's dropping. It's just fading there. So I think she'll foul that one. She won't be happy. She'll keep her second round throw of 64-52 as the best so far. Wow. Now, remember, the best eight of these throwers go through to the next three throws. And so far, this young lady, Shi Ying Liu, of China has had two failures. She is living very, very dangerously. The best this year, she's capable of 66 plus. Let's see what she can do now. Well, she pulled hard and it has gone out. Just over that uh, 60 meter mark. So that should hopefully keep her in the action. Let's wait and see. She's the Chinese record holder and has just seen her teammate come within 22 centimeters of her national record, so she needed to pull it out. Well, she did, really. That's important for her to produce the goods. 62-28 in eighth position. Well, you can't leave it any later than that. Meanwhile, back on the track, the women's 200 metres. Michelle Iali, well, DNS, that's a big surprise, really. She was six in the 100 metres. A lot of athletes dropping out. There's been a little bit of a bug going around, I think, in the uh, some of the teams, and that's a disappointment, really. Well, there's the rest of the athletes. Asher Smith on the inside, perhaps one to watch now that Ali is out of it. On the outside, Crystal Emmanuel of Canada, maybe, as the other two to go through. Remember, three of the fastest 
And then the uh, other losers, the three fastest of those, go through to the semi finals on Thursday. There's Emmanuel, Chris Emmanuel of Canada, Canadian record holder at the 200 metres, 22 60 this year, so she's in good shape. This is the side of her. Tugade of Guam, i.e., disappointingly not there at the moment. And then Vargas of Venezuela, the American, South American champion. And Monza of Ghana, one of the other ones to watch in this, the Commonwealth Games silver medalist at the relay. And obviously a big favourite for the crowd here. You know, Asha Smith of Great Britain. Well, she's got the unfortunate lane two. Random draws for the heats of the 20 metres, but uh, the one to watch, I think, in this particular heat. Just uh, Rafael uh, on the outside there of France, just uh, taking it a little bit easy. Cold conditions, as we said, warm here at the Olympic Stadium. So the athletes go down to the blocks. On the outside, it's Rafael of France, then Emmanuel of Canada, Dugardi of Guam, and we're missing out on AE, but then we go to Vargas of Venezuela, Afonso of Ghana, and Asia Smith of Great Britain. Asia Smith has gone off really well on the inside. She's already caught Afonso on the outside of her. Also going well is Emmanuel of Canada. Asia Smith storming around that bend. The crowd are loving it. These two are clear. Asia Smith tearing down the track. Emmanuel of Canada there is in second place. And I think just on the inside, Afonso of Ghana may be coming through for third. But no, on the outside, it was a Raphael, maybe of France, that got it. Wow, the crowd loved that. They certainly did. 22 73. Very, very comfortable with Dean. Good run there from Dina Asher Smith. A season's best. Remember, she's coming back from having broken a bone in her foot earlier this year. And with every race, she seems to get a little bit better. Emmanuel got out hard. She ran well. And then it was pretty tight for that third spot. Rafi, the Frenchwoman, just managed to hang on from Amponsa, despite the fact that the Ghanaian was closing quickly. But Asher Smith got a brilliant start on the inside, but Emmanuel was nicely away on the outside as well. Well, it was a different class for me. I mean, she literally tore around that bend. And then in the home straight, she, I don't think she really tried too much, Kath. She just really just cruised through. And that's a very comfortable victory. And as you say, coming back from an injury, that's confidence boosting. It is, and she's short of races, the British athlete. She's battled back all season. World finalist in Beijing two years ago when she finished fifth, and then fifth in Rio as well. She was devastated in the indoor season to pick up that injury. British record holder now. Took those records off the great Cathy Cook. And that's good. That's good. She needs the races. She'll get confidence from that. On a home track, it was good qualification by the British athlete. There's that uh, final scorecard for that uh, fifth round of the women's Asia Smith, Emmanuel Raffae, going through a season's best, as Cathy just said, for Asia Smith. Well, here's the standings after three rounds of the women's javelin. Remember, there's three more rounds to go. Spartakova leading the Olympic champion. Oh, no, so the past Olympic champion, twice Olympic champion, 66-76. That great throw from Lee of China with a personal best there, 66-25. And Kolak, well, the new Olympic champion there in third place at the moment. But early days, still more three more throws for each of these athletes. So there are the javelin standings in the men's pole vault. Art of Belgium, his third attempt at 5.50. This is the opening height. Oh, dear. Well, he shakes his hands. That's got to hurt. But it was a third and final attempt 
for the athlete from Belgium, their national record holder. He's gone over 571 this season. But unfortunately, with a mishap on his third and final attempt as well, he exits the men's pole vault competition. Oh, the 24-year-old limping away. We wish him well. Oh, you say, nice yeah. to see Renault Lavillini. You say, good to see Renault Lavillini come in some sort of consolation. But when you say exit the competition, you don't really want to exit in that fashion, do you? Really, that was quite a dangerous thing. Look, he just lost his grip. The hand gave way. And when that happens, the momentum carried him luckily into the pit. But having said that, that's not the sort of thing. Look, you just you're just missing the point of uh, contact there with the concrete, which is, I think, a good thing, obviously. Well, you see, he had the chalk at the top of his pole. A lot of athletes have the sticky black resin, but he seems OK. He's walked away. Now, Raphael Holtstepper of Germany. His third and final attempt at five metres and 50 took silver at the World Championships two years ago after taking the title in 2013. He's in 5.84 this season. So third and final attempt for the former champion. Oh, no. Well, the height was there, but he's brought it down. Well, that's the first shock of this men's pole vault final. 5.94 at his best. 80 volt of this season the German exits his pole vault competition I can tell you all the athletes in this men's pole vault final have come in at the height of 550 apart from Renola Villani he's due to enter the competition at the next height which is 565 so Holstepper medals at the last two world championships exits the opening height really surprised by that Catherine he's such an athletic gymnastic performer and so often usually produces his best when it counts. So, what order will they finish in? Ezekiel Kemboy in the middle there, Conceslas Kipruto on the right and Jairus Birec on the left. Ezekiel Kemboy aiming for his eighth consecutive steeplechase world championship medal, which would be unprecedented. 3,000 steeple comes up later in around about an hour's time. Then we'll have the men's eight and the men's four. So the six heat to the women's 200 meters. Ruler the German, DNS in lane number seven. But Talu is back for the Ivory Coast in lane number four. The silver medalist in the 100 meters looking to start her sprint double campaign. Of the women's 200 meters. It's getting a little bit chillier. We are mentioning it because the temperature is dropping quite quickly here at just after 8 o'clock UK time. So Antonique Strawn of the Bahamas starts in lane number 8, a semi-finalist at the Olympics over this distance in 2012. And then we go into lane number 6, Sarah Achu of Switzerland. Sarah Gusa of Italy starts in lane number 5. But here is Marie Jose Talu of the Ivory Coast, silver in the 100 meters in 10.86 seconds. The world number seven this year over the half lap distance, 22.16. She starts in lane number four. And Boska of Latvia in three, and Jimenez of Chile, their national record holder in both the sprints in lane number two. So. First three as usual, and then the next three fastest to the semi-finals on Thursday. Talu of the Ivory Coast, understandably delighted with her silver medal in the 100 metres. Losing the gold medal to Tori Bowie by just one one hundredth of a second. Bowie up next in the seventh and final heat. Jimenez, Busca, Talu, Sirigasa, Achu, and Strawn. So expect a fast start from Talu in lane number four. There she goes, the 100 metre silver medalist. Strawn of the Bahamas on the outside. But Talu, oh, she looks over her right shoulder. Nice and easy. 
Achu in lane number six for Switzerland. She's finishing strongly, strong on the outside for the Bahamas. But Talu of the Ivory Coast, 22.71 seconds. Well, she doesn't look particularly happy with it. The 100 meter medalist, but takes the hug from Achu of Switzerland, who finished in second place, rounded and confirmed in 22.70 then for the 100 meter medalist. It's fair to say her 100 is stronger than her 200, but a little bit of confidence from that 100 meter medal. We'll see more of the semi finals, of course, will show us some more form on Thursday, but the job done. Oh, I, I thought she ran really well in the 100. I mean, I, I, I had Adele actually to do really well in the 100, and not a lot of people said that she was capable of getting a medal, but actually she almost won the gold, as we know. And in the 200, she looks incredibly strong. She's got the 400 meter basic in her legs that she sometimes runs. So I think this 200 meters this time might be even better than a 100 meter result. And if that's the case, she could be in there with a medal. And look at how well Strawn finished for the third automatic spot. There's been some great qualifying in that 200 meters. One more heat to come. In the men's pole vault, Ji out of China. Third attempt, 5.50. No, not to be for the Chinese athlete today. So they're doing well at the other end of the stadium in the women's javelin final. But Yao exits the competition oh, from one Chinese athlete to another, Steve. Well, that great throw, really, from Ling Wei Li in the, uh, what was it, the third round. 66-25. She's smiling when she picked up the javelin. Maybe we're going to get another big throw. Let's wait and see. Well, it's gone out. Oh, well, it is another big throw. Not sure when that's going to improve her best, but it's over the 65. She is having a great series. Remember, her best 66-25 in second place at the moment. Spartakova leads 66-76. Some 50 centimetres or so in front of Lee at the moment. She's looking, she's looking. Wow, 65-30, just below her personal best throw in the second round, third round, I should say. Meanwhile... The leader of the competition coming now into the uh, runway, Spatakova. That lead, as I said before, 66-76 in the second round. No throw in the third. She is clear by, I say, 50 centimetres or so, but that's not much in the javelin, really, it isn't. So she knows she's still got a fight on her hands. But the experience of this woman is absolutely tremendous. Double Olympic champion. 12 and 8. It's gone up, it's gone up, and it's come down again. Well, they're peppering that uh, 65 meter line there now in this uh, fourth round. She's looking, I think she knows that perhaps it's not as good as that uh, big throw she had. But having said that, she's coming into great form. I think Kathy said that uh, throughout this year she's been getting better and better. And that throw. 65 64 well wow. 66 76 it's not as good but it's again consistent and in the javelin that's important so a confirmation of heat number six no is 200 meters 100 meter silver medalist talu of the ivory coast comfortable and through the only one under 23 seconds for atu and strong also automatically through So, we're on to the next height of 5 metres and 65. Three athletes have exited the competition at 5 metres and 50. Lysek of Poland. Six metres indoors for a national record this season. Went over 5 metres and 50 easily at the first time of asking. Well, he's not going to do the same over the new height. First time failure at 5 metres and 65. Had that terrific indoor season. He jumped the six metres in a shopping centre when they put on a special pole vault competition. It's an outright Polish record. 
but he'll need a second attempt at 5 metres and 65. He's done 585 outdoors this season, which is an outdoor personal best. Oh, how he'd love to get near that 6 metre barrier outdoors and here tonight in London. Well, we've got the last heat coming here in the women's 200 metres. And we thought there would be quite a few uh, athletes missing there, but there are just warming up. But there's one very notable absentee, no Tory Bowie. A real shame. She was on the warm-up track earlier and looked OK. Now, bearing in mind, she's won the 100 metres, so here she was going for the two. She's the fastest woman in the world this year. But she will not take her place in the starting lineup in this seventh heat. So a real surprise there not to have the American in this one. So lane six is empty. Gloria Hooper on the outside. Semi-finalist in Beijing. Rebecca Haas of Germany. Six is empty, no buoy. And here's Rojangela Santos, smashed the Brazilian national record in the semis of the 100, 10.91, before finishing seventh in the final, so we know she's in good form. Cornelia Halbeer, second in the Lausanne Diamond League, then Bass, and Seymour Hackett, third in the Trinidad National Championships, relay bronze in Beijing two years ago. So Hackett in two. Santos in five, and Rebecca Haas of Germany in seven will fancy it. Santos will have some empty space as she gets going with no Tory buoy in lane six. Those are the times required for anyone not in the top three looking for a fastest loser spot. The slowest of those, 23.38. So Skiffers, Duncan, Stevens, Miller, Weibo, Tarlu, Asher Smith, all the big names have made it through, but no Tory buoy in this one. That's Haas of Germany in seven. Last heat, women's 200 metres. Well, Santos really flew in the semi-finals of the 100 metres. Haas has got well, coming up and past Hooper and powering her way through on the inside is Seymour Hackett. Haas is well clear here. Now they're just starting to come back to her with Santos coming through for that second spot. Haas and Santos very, very close on the line for the third spot, very tight between Hackett and Halbier of Switzerland. But that was a good run from Haas. She got out well and dips under 23 seconds. With Santos in second, and Hackett did indeed come through just to deny Halbier that fourth spot. It was good running by the German in personal best form this year 22.76 and over the 100 at 11.06. So you can see when you've run just over 11 seconds, you're going to run a good bend, and the German did earlier in the season at the IAAF World Relays in the Bahamas. She was involved in the 4 by one relay win for the German squad. It really was a big victory for them. Real battle, wasn't there? For the other two automatic qualifying spaces, but the German, 22.99, as you say, and with no buoy, well, that's made the double potentially a little bit easier for Miller Weibo or Tarlu, and for Skippers to maybe get another medal. Fifth round of the javelin. You in eighth place, 62-71. Not much happening so far in this round. Oh, she's screaming at that one. That one's gone out, and it's going a long way. Well, that's got to be better than a 62-71. Well, oh, the Chinese javelin throwers are really, really putting it on here. A teammate, Lee, 66-25 in second at the moment. That's a good throw. You can see the power there launches it out it's gone sailing out 
and that's the 65 meter she knows it's a big throw and it is 65 26 well china now in second and third place in the javelin there you are that's the time that uh, the javelin throwers get they've got a limited amount of time well lee is really enjoying it she's got a smile on her face she's having a great competition there it is that's 66 25 coming in now it's a good throw it's gone up high again oh but just dropping sometimes it goes up too high and it does drop she's fouled it she knows it wasn't as good as she wanted there's the foot over the line still second place at the moment and third for the Chinese athlete Spadakova still in that lead with that massive 66 76 50 centimeters clear of anybody at the moment started off as a heptathlete Jan Zelezny the great javelin throw of perhaps of all time said that she should take up the javelin she wasn't sure but when he said it well what can you do you have to take it up really don't you that's exactly what she did what a result it's been since then one championship after another this woman has just chalked them off the crowd clapping now she launches it it's gone up high and it's gone a long way but it drops again no wind it doesn't carry so it drops quickly now well, she shakes her head fouls it can you do though you're in the gold medal position they're starting to creep up on you and you're still throwing well but uh, you haven't launched a really massive throw to secure it really she's had an incredible career steve and it's amazing that she finds herself on the verge of yet another gold medal five meters and 65 sam kendrick's first attempt Oh, he hugs the bar. A couple of athletes already clear at this height. Zhu of China's gone over. Marshall of Australia. And now Sam Kendricks. Easy as you like for the American. Rebecca Haas, good performance from her, Santos and Hackett just denying the Swiss athlete by a hundredth of a second, no place for her in the semis as a fastest loser, that was tight for the third spot. So the semi-finals coming up on Thursday, Daphne Skippers setting the fastest time, but maybe the most impressive qualifier was Miller Weibo, she looked so smooth. Talu making absolutely no doubt in her heat and an opportunity opening up here with no Tory Bowie champion over the 100 meters deciding not to start in that seventh heat. Bianca Williams, Palfreman and Jodian Williams taking the fastest loser spots. Liu in the final round. In that fifth round, she soared with a 65-26 into the bronze medal position, just behind her teammate, Lee, 66-25. Oh, it's got up high. Very high, but it's dropped again. Well, a bit of a wait now to see if she can hold on to that bronze medal. Good launch. You just have to get it absolutely right. With a degree. And I think I was taught in my physics lesson 45 degrees is the right sort of angle, but that perhaps isn't the case, just as easy as that in the javelin. There you have it in third place, 65 26. Wojciechowski, the Poland, first attempt, 5 meters and 65. Oh, yes, wants to stay involved, wants to get in the gang. And he has indeed Marshall, Zhu, Kendricks, Wojtychowski. Remember, this is the height when Renaud Lavillenie, the Olympic champion, here in 2012. 
he's entering the competition and here he is first attempt oh yes well when you've got a runway and a pole vault set up in your back garden you can train when you like and look how many major medals this man has he shakes his head he's not particularly happy but he goes over Chapelle of France looking to follow his teammate first attempt at 565 oh yes well the French representing here early stages of course in this men's pole vault final and you think Hendricks has gone over the height of six meters going to potentially need to get near that to get a medal here in London tonight but good clearance well, we're still in the final round of the javelin. Not much has happened really so far. Took suit that uh, 64-52, keeping her in fifth place. She really has got to launch something around about the 65 plus. It's gone up high, and it drops again just short of that 65. So no movement, I don't think, with her, and she will stay in fifth place at the moment. The last few throws of the women's javelin now coming into action. Can anybody pull out a massive throw to start altering the positions of the medals? There they are, Spotikova, Lee and Yu. Well, what can this woman do? Kovac. She has the capability of launching a very, very big throw. Ah, oh, it's dived again. Her form in this competition really hasn't been great at all, has it? Another foul. Wow, her best throw, 64-95, just keeping her at the moment out of the middles in fourth. And she was the world leader coming into this competition, Steve, as well as being Olympic champion. What a story this could be if Spatakova manages to hang on. Well, these are the challenges. Lee is the only one, really, that can really upset things now. That throw of 66-25 was a long throw. She's come in, she's launched it. Oh, it's a good throw, but not quite. Well, Spartakova knows she's won it. She really does. Lee, what a great performance from the Chinese athletes, though. Second and third. Well, Spartakova, the double Olympic champion, now becomes the world champion. Absolutely fantastic. Winning the title again, 10 years after becoming champion of the world in Osaka in 2007 what a journey and what a story the celebrations from the Chinese athletes but the last throw of the competition she knows she's got it how can you rally yourself after that how can you how can you go down the runway and produce a, a good throw and there's their coach saying come on concentrate you've still got one throw left very hard to do that surely that second round throw, she loves to get the big throw in early in the competition, she really does, and she's done exactly the same again. But she can't concentrate, she knows she's won it. This is a difficulty, isn't it, really? So, the last and final throw of the women's javelin. Let's hope, let's just hope she can just concentrate enough to throw a massive throw. It's gone up, it is good, and it's not bad, but it's not really what uh, you'd expect. But that doesn't mean anything. Look at the celebrations. Absolutely fantastic. There's the coach for the Czech Republic. Well, that's a marvellous performance. Well, Steve, the double Olympic champion is the double world champion. Back on top after taking time out to have her son, Janek, who she said she named Janek as a part tribute to Jan Zalesny, the man who you said advised her to swap from the heptathlon to the javelin. And at the age of 36, she is still going strong. Gold in Osaka, gold in London. Have to go over the barriers just to be with her coach and her friends. 
And look at the Chinese behind, they're still celebrating as well. They've had a great competition too. Wow. As I said before, she her competition is very strong at the beginning. She gets those big throws in, Kat, and it's so, so difficult, isn't it, sometimes to, to come back from that. Look at that. She's really enjoying, she's really enjoying herself. She's enjoying it, Steve. She, she will, she's in disbelief, I think, a little bit before her because she's enjoying her throwing. You speak to her and she says, I love my throwing. I'm going to keep going. I'm going to do it for as long as I can. And now she's come world champion again. Absolutely outstanding. The crowd are on their feet. Absolutely delighted for her. There she goes. She's down safely. She's all right. But it was a good competition by the Chinese taking silver and bronze, that personal best for Lou. But for the Boris Patakova, wow. What a story. What a competition. Well, the field events really have really produced some great competition so far. There's Patakova's performance. 66 76 taking the goal. Great throw from Li Wei Li of China. 66 25. A personal best. That's not, uh, that's not to be underestimated in the world competition. Huey Liu also getting the bronze medal. 65 26. Uh, an in-stadium interview with, with Ewan Thomas, the former British athlete. She had tears in her eyes. In fact, she started crying, guys. That's how much it means. So, from one super field event final that's produced a gold medal for the Czech Republic to the men's pole vault, a roar. Lysek, his third and final attempt at 5.65. service resumed yes he says he will be so angry with himself you don't want early failures in major championship competitions in the field events you don't want them to come back and bite you when the medals are awarded but he stays with a 565 third time clearance the action on the track turns to the one lap hurdles Dalila Mohamed, the fastest woman in the world this year. She goes in the third of the semi-finals. As always, only the first two plus two fastest losers. Brutal qualification as they attempt to gain access to Thursday's final. There's the lineup for the first of the three semi-finals. Susanna Hainover, the defending champion for the Czech Republic in six. Cory Carter of the United States outside her, the third fastest woman in the world this year. That Shamir Little went ninth on the all-time list when she qualified second for the US team. But remember, she snapped a barrier and then stumbled badly in her heat. It was only the fact that she's got her lifetime best on the fourth flat down that she got out of jail. The magnificently named Sparkle McKnight just missed the medal in the Pan American Games two years ago in Trinidad. Corey Carter flexing, rocking and rolling. Fell in the semi-finals two years ago in Beijing. Let's hope history doesn't repeat itself for her. Susanna Hainover, double world champion. Olympic bronze in London, fourth in Rio, so often gets it right on the big occasion. Behind her in five, Petra Fontany, semi-finalist in Beijing two years ago, lifetime best this season, and will need a big run here. Wendy Nell, twice African champion, made the final in Beijing, running pretty close to lifetime best form this year you'll need to get out hard with Hanover in six Johanna Linky Weitz, European silver medalist last year and on the inside for Jamaica Leah Nugent third in the Jamaican national championships sixth in the Olympic final last year Nugent, Jamaica in two, Linky Vitz, Poland three, Nell, South Africa four, Fontenive, Switzerland five, Hanover, Czech Republic six, defending champion, Carter, USA seven, McKnight, Trinidad eight, Little, USA, on the outside in the trademark specs and the headband. Ninth on the all-time list in that incredible US championship final. So, 
full focus required here. First semi-final of the women's 400 meter hurdles. Only two guaranteed a place in Thursday's showdown. They are away. The first time of asking. And Little has gone out pretty hard on the outside. So too Corey Carter. And Carter has made up ground on McKnight's outsider. Hainover has run a more steady first 200 metres. It's Carter leading then. Little still going well on the outside. And Hainover, the defending champion, now beginning to come through in the middle, making a big move in that third 100 metres. It's Carter and Hainover with Little on the outside. That's better from the American in lane nine. Remember what a mess she made of the heats. And Hainover has timed this really well. Hainover taking that last barrier. A little stutter from Carter. Hainover and Carter miles clear there. And I think it may have been Wendon Nell who came through for third. So she'll have to wait to see if she can go through as a fastest loser. But what a run from the defending champion. Yet again, timing it well, and yet again, delivering when the pressure was on. Well, it's all about getting your rhythm right. Really. There's Little. She was on the outside again. She's disappointed. She still didn't clear those last couple of hurdles very well at all. She was stuttering into it, getting um, all sorts of problems with her technique. Now we saw coming through into third. So she's going to have to wait. Remember, it's just the first two, and then the two fastest qualifies through. But you, you're right, Rob. Pain of a runner. Controlled. Absolutely perfect race, really. She left it until the last 100 metres. Closing all the time, really, on Carter, the American, just on her outside. Carter, though, run well. She only had to give in the first two. She knew that as she came over that hurdle. They both checked around to make sure there's no one near them. And on the inside, you can just see the green vest, really, of Nell of South Africa coming through for third place. But they, she was a long way back. These two are clear and away. So back into the field, let's check in on the men's pole vault final. 17-year-old Mondo Duplantis, his third and final attempt at 5.65. He's been over 5.90 this season, the teenager. Oh, well, not to be today. Of course, he'll be desperately disappointed. He's the world number three. He's gone over 5 metres and 90. He's absolutely devastated. But at 17 years old and the world junior record holder, his time is going to come on the big stage. But Barber from Canada, his third and final attempt at 5 metres and 65. The defending champion. Oh, oh, he gives it a rattle. But he's still in the mix. Well, a couple of these vaulters living dangerously, including Sean Barber. But he continues on to the next height. Well, we have the start list for the qualifying for the women's shot put. Group A and B. Disappointment there for Dongmo, twice African champion. She doesn't start. 18.30, the required mark for a place in tomorrow night's final. And there is Group B. Gong, well, she has been the standout performer so far this year, and in the absence of Valerie Adams, I wonder if this is her chance to finally secure a gold. Danielle Bunch and Michelle Carter have been performing really well on the Diamond League circuit this year. They will also hope to do it in one throw, 18.30 the target. So, Lysek, Poland, new height, 5 metres and 75. Gives himself another roar. It worked last time on his third time clearance at 5.65. Oh, that's better. The adjustments have been made. And a first time clearance of 5 metres and 75. Marshall of Australia. His first attempt at 5 metres and 75. World Junior Silver Medalist last year, the 20-year-old. 
No. And have two further attempts if needed. Qualified comfortably with five meters and six deep, so he'll come back for a second attempt at 75. Zhu of China, a clear scorecard so far after opening at five meters and 50. The Asian champion four years ago. He holds a Chinese record indoors at five meters and 81. Oh, lovely. Well. The female athletes doing well in that javelin final. And Zhu, the season's best of 575. Kendricks, USA, first attempt at the same height. It's beautiful stuff. Serves in the US Army Reserve. First time over at 5.75. Nine out of nine wins this season, Sam Kendricks. He continues. Barber, first attempt. No, not close for Barber. He has been a bit erratic since his win last year, two years ago at the World Championships. Well, how impressive was Susanna Hainover there. She's going for a hat-trick of victories in the four hurdles. She's in the final, so too is Corey Carter. Wenda Nell will have to wait and see if 55-7's good enough to go through as a fastest loser. Going back to the track now, the second semi-final of the women's 400 meters hurdles pretty cutthroat as you said just two to qualify this is a pretty loaded semi there's peterson there who really looked so good in qualified she won a sorry she was second in the heat 55 22 but easing down second at the olympics a bit nervous tension going through these women they know this is pretty tough they know they've got to be on their game all the way through here that's uh, tracy of Jamaica finalist for Jamaica in the Olympics and there's the lineup pretty much a loaded field I suppose to a certain extent Springer, Nathaniel, Peterson there are there, it's all those could win it so too could Tracy in lane 4 well, we go through the lineup on the outside this is Cassandra Tate she's got a wild card into this for winning the uh, diamond race so she went to the trials and just really ran through the motions there. So nothing to be gathered by that sort of performance, but one of the performers to watch here. Fodorozzo from Italy, the under-23 champion, just 20 years of age. And then obviously one to watch. Second in the Olympics, Slot Pedersen became the Rio's or Denmark's first female medalist in athletics in Rio with that silver medal. Glory Nathaniel, TB in the heat, finishing third with uh, 53, 55, sorry, 30. And then the European bronze medalist, Lee Sprunger of Switzerland, looked very good in that heat, which she won in 55, 14. And then the Olympic uh, medalist, and twice Jamaican champion, Rista Tiara, Tracy. And obviously the big favourite from the local crowd anyway's point of view. Megan Breezley. So near really to winning, sorry, to getting the uh, final of the World Championships in her first hurdle last time around. Can she make the finals this time? Nagata Zupin of Slovenia, European silver medalist in the junior age group. Moving up now to the senior age. Tate, Lorenzo, Peterson, Nathaniel, Springer, Tracy, Beasley, Zupin. Away 
there they go. And it's Springer in the middle of the field there running well, also going on the outside of her. Nathaniel of Nigeria running well. Nathaniel is pouring down the back straight at the moment. Just on the inside, Tracy of Jamaica also running well. On the outside, Tate of America. So, so far, no major problems for any of these women in the hurdles. Tate running really well. She's out in front at the moment, but coming hard on the inside is the Nigerian. Jamaica coming through now, Tracy. Remember, it's just two to qualify. Tracy now coming over this hurdle on the outside. Tate slightly fading now, but it's Tracy now ahead of the rest of the field. Springer coming through now hard, two to qualify. It looks like it's just going to be Tracy and Springer. Tate on the outside of America is still holding that third place for charging through on the inside there, but I think it's still Tate. So really, the form book, I suppose, went to... Uh, what we expect there, Tracy coming through all the way. Springer, though, left it a little bit late, but it's only the first two to qualify. And in the end, probably not too difficult for both those athletes. Pretty reasonable times, though, 54.79 for Tracy and 54.82 for Springer. Good running there from Ristinana Tracy. Springer closed down, as you said, Steve. She left it a little bit late, just looking at the time. Cassandra Tate is in a fastest loser spot, which means there definitely won't be a place in the final for Little, her compatriot who went in the first heat. But um, the Jamaicans way clear at the moment. And look how much ground Sprunger made up in the red in the centre of your picture in the closing stages. Excellent last 50. Yeah, yeah. This is it. I think what real. I think Tracy realised that Springer was going to really be a threat over the last 50. She always comes hard, and I think she went off. Tracy went off. That is very hard indeed to make sure of that place. Springer comes through very fast, and there's no need to charge for the line. Those two clear of really Tate on the outside of America. So one more semi-final to come in the women's 400 meter hurdles. Beautiful evening in London. Wojciechowski then, 5 metres and 75, first attempt, oh, well he ran off to make sure the bar didn't hit him on the head, so, a first time failure, for the former world champion, won that title six years ago, but I don't have a first attempt then, La Villani at 5 metres and 75. Good speed, good knee lift, wonderful carriage of the pole vault. Oh, yes, well, vital first time clearance. I mentioned earlier you want to get them in early doors. You don't want to lose medals on count back. And that was a wonderful clearance by La Villani. Well, can Chappelle, his teammate, follow suit? First attempt. Oh, not quite for that French athlete. He'll come back though, second attempt at 5 metres and 75. Well, this is already bubbling up to be a good competition and shot qualifying continues. Gong of China enters the circle. So much Chinese success already here this evening. Yeah, she is a massive, massive threat for the gold medal. Li Xiao Gong, silver medalist here in London, bronze in Beijing, and she got a silver two years ago on home soil. And she has made absolutely certain that she's done the minimum requirement, 18.97, she only needed 18.30. Gong is in the final. Can she at last turn all those silvers and bronze medals into gold? Well, Anita Marton is throwing in qualification group A, the Olympic bronze medalist, the world indoor silver medalist. She's got 1963 this season. Yep, there's the yellow line. She gets the white flag, and that will be one throw required. Job done. It's a cool evening, and she will go off, get warm, and prepare for tomorrow's final. Two of the big names making absolutely certain they go through with their first round throws.
waiting for the official confirmation. Yep, 1876, job done for the Hungarian. So there's Sean Barber. The height's still at 5 metres and 75. So he's been a bit erratic because he won the world title a couple of years ago, was 10th at the Rio Olympics last year. Those Olympics in Rio were won by Thiago Braz de Silva. He's not here in London at these World Championships. So, 5 metres and 75. Still just 23 years old. He was third at the Commonwealth Games three years ago in Glasgow in 2014 in Scotland. Fourth at the World Indoor Championships in Portland in Oregon last year. Second attempt at 5 metres and 75 then for Barber. No, well, he's not been close on the first two efforts. He's got one final attempt at this height of 5.75. It would be a season's best for him, 5 metres and 72. Is his best this World Championship season. So he's 21 centimetres down on his lifetime best from 2015. So one more attempt for Sean Barber of Canada. So the pole vault final continues. So Michelle Carter, what a performance in the Olympic Games last year. She won it with the very last throw of the competition. Bronze in Beijing two years ago, but now in the absence of Valerie Adams, she is the woman to beat. And that looks good from the American. Remember, her dad got the Olympic silver in LA, and there was always plenty of banter between the two of them. And she's done one better than dad. And it was a thrilling end to the shot put competition last year, it really was. Valerie Adams is seven months pregnant. She's made an appearance here already as an IAAF ambassador and she's gone home to go through the last two months of her pregnancy. So Michelle Carter is in the final. London looking fabulous in the evening. And there is the results of the second semi-final of the women's four hurdles. Tracy making absolutely certain. So, a big reception for Ailey Doyle of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. The third semi final in this women's 400 metre hurdles. Olympic finalist, European champion. She starts in nine. Grace Claxton of Puerto Rico took up hurdling a couple of seasons ago. Now down to 55 85. In lane seven, Denisa Rosalova of the Czech Republic. 55-41 this season, but a lifetime best of just over 54 seconds. Rhonda White of Jamaica. Big improvements already in 2017. Down to 54-29. She'll start in lane number six. And then the world leader, Dalila Mohammed of the USA. 52.64 seconds. She's the Olympic champion. Lane four, Sage Watson of Canada. Very near to her Canadian record. 54-39, just outside it this season. She'll start in four. Then Pladosa of Italy, a transferee from Cuba. An Italian husband and coach. She'll start in lane number three. And then Gianna Woodruff of Panama, the new South American champion. Start on the inside in lane two. The third and final semi final of the women's 400 meter hurdles. There's your lineup. Mohammed in five from the USA. The pre championship favorite and the favorite to qualify in this final semi final. So Mohammed in five, 
That 52.64, the quickest time in the world since 2011. And she's absolutely flying, the American. Doyle down the back straight for Great Britain in line. But it's the American, the Canadian Watson in lane number four is running reasonably well as well. And a big cheer round the top bend for the British athlete Doyle, who's rising third as they go round the top bend into the home straight. But it's the world leader. Mohamed, lane five. The top two guaranteed a place in the final on Thursday. Well, the Americans running well, as is the Canadian in lane number four. Mohamed. Watson, and in third, Doyle of Great Britain and Northern Ireland, unofficially 55 seconds exactly. She looks to her inside and says, good job to Sage Watson from Canada, who was in the lane insider. Well, Shamir Little, the world number two, she's seen her teammate not run as fast as she has done this season and struggle to get into the final. But that was Watson, and that was a wonderful run by the Canadian. 55.05 for her. Ailey Doyle of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. Well, she came in in third in 55.33. I think she's just going to make it into that final on Thursday night. But the world leader, Rob Mohammed, well, she ran as expected, but the Canadian insider, Watson, really did hang on to her coattails there, didn't she? Yeah, good, good run from Watson. She closed Mohammed down towards the end. Ailey Doyle taking the second of the fastest losers spots. Tate, the bronze medalist from Beijing, she's the fastest of the two. But Ailey Doyle's place in the final means that Wenda Nell misses out. But Dalila Mohammed, she was so good when she won the Olympic title last year. A little bit of a wobble since the American champs, but she's back. She's in the final, and what a climax that will be tomorrow night. So Marshall of Australia steps up for his third attempt at five metres and 75. Encouragement again there from Sam Kendricks. Come on, he says. So the Australian went over 5.65 at the first time of asking, looking to stay in this final. Oh, not to be for Curtis Marshall. Still just 20 years old. Like Mondo de Plantis, maybe the future of pole vaulting. The world junior silver medalist last year. Exit this competition with a 565 clearance. Sean Barber. Well, he's riding the third attempt bus tonight here in London. He went over five meters and 65 at the third time of asking. Defending champion. He's got to do a third time clearance again to stay in here. No, he hasn't been close on his three attempts. So he exits the competition. So the title won't be defended. But again, another huge talent at just 23. Chapelle of France. He waits. Looking for the coach's advice. Looking for some support from the crowd. Oh yes, here we go. 575 third attempt. It would be a lifetime best for the Frenchman, and it would be a perfect time to do it. Oh, not to be. European under-23 silver medalist this year. Exits the men's pole vault final with that first time clearance at 5.65. So the men's pole vault final continues. Next height after this will be five meters and 82. And there's confirmation of the third and final semi final in the women's 400 meter hurdles. Mohammed of the USA, Watson and Doyle. Small cue for Doyle, but she is in that final on Thursday night. Well, what a race that promises to be. Hanover is the defending world champion, Dalila Mohammed is the Olympic champion. Ailey Doyle making it through as the fastest loser, so to Cassandra Tate. This is Raven Saunders. 
in the second round. Remember, 1830, the required mark for an automatic berth. All the best 12. There aren't too many women over the automatic line yet. But Saunders, who wasn't too far off the podium in Rio last year, she makes absolutely certain there. We already know Michelle Carter, her compatriot, the Olympic champion, will return tomorrow. And Saunders will be joining her, just waiting for the official confirmation. Two throws required for the Americans. 1863, she'll return tomorrow. Well, we are not far away from the first of three track finals this evening. Well, Rob, there's a real favourite in here for you. I know the man you love, not only for his performances on the track, but what he does afterwards. Yeah, Ezekiel Kenboy is a man who has been around for such a long time. Sometimes he finishes in lane six, sometimes he whips his shirt off, shows us the relatively slim physique, and then indulges in a bit of dancing afterwards. I wouldn't put him down as favourite for this one. In fact, he just missed the... He got on the podium last year in Rio with a brilliant bronze, had one foot on the infield after he was shot, got disqualified and then decided as a result of that happening that he must come out of retirement and try and finish his career with a medal. Could it come tonight? We'll find out very soon. We will, Rob, and it's one to look forward to. But at the moment, Lysaka Poland is looking forward to his first attempt at 5 metres and 82. Five athletes are still in this men's pole vault final. A man that belongs in the six metre clubs, one of them. Oh, no, first time failure. At the new height of five metres and 82. 22 men belong in that six metre club. It's pretty exclusive. And Lysek's one of them, but he'll come back for his second attempt at 582. Zhu of China, so far so good. He entered at five metres and 50. And he's had a first time clearance at every height so far. Five metres and 70 is his season's best. So that was increased with his first time clearance at five metres and 75. Lifetime best is five metres and 80 from 2014. So, with the ease that he cleared the last three heights, his lifetime performance would put him in a very good position, Zhu of China. They're having a good night here in London. So, Lysex failed in his first attempt at 82. Zhu of China, his first attempt. Well, well, oh, yes. First time over five metres and 82. Along with Kendricks and La Villani, he's the only athlete left in this competition with a clear scorecard. Goes into pole position, excuse the pun, with his first time clearance here at 582. A lifetime best for the Chinese athlete. Very good vaulting, was 12th at the World Championships in 2013. Six at the Olympics in Rio last year. And at the moment, is in a very good position. So, Sam Kendricks. There we go, first attempt at five metres and 82. Born in Oxford, Mississippi. Can he match Sue? and go over 5 metres and 82 at the first time of asking. Oh, yes, he can. Oh, one of the most popular and liked athletes on the circuit. A wonderful character, blows us a kiss. Join Zoo over 5 metres and 82. Here we go, then. 
with the final of the men's 3,000 meter steeplechase. Ezekiel Kemboy, the greatest steeplechaser in history, potentially bringing the curtain down on his career. Evan Yeager of the United States, hoping to become the first non-Kenyan-born athlete to win this title for 30 years. Mekissi, the Frenchman, three successive Olympic medals in the steeplechase. Can he once again get on the podium in the World Championship? It is an absolutely loaded field with so many great stories to come, irrespective of who wins. We will bring you this race very soon. Meanwhile, back to the pole vault. Wojciechowski. Well, he raised it up. He's put it back down. The entrance of the men for that 3,000 meter steeplechase. Well, he's put his pole back down. He was due to attempt, obviously, five meters and 82 to try and join Zoo and Kendricks. So he re chalks the hands. Shared world bronze in 2013. He's ready now. First attempt at 5 metres and 62. In fifth position at the moment. That would be elevated. Should he get over this? Oh, oh, well, very close. He'll have to come back for a second attempt at that height. Lysek failed at 5.82. He's chosen to pass his second attempt at this and go to the next height of 5.89. So tactics are becoming involved. Not unusual in pole vault finals. Take into account their failures. And try and be smart. It was a close effort, wasn't it? By Wojciechowski. Rushed it off, though, on the way down. So the adjustments will be made. And next, and shortly to try 5 metres and 82, will be Renola Villani, but back onto the trek for the men's 3,000 metre steeplechase final. Here we go then. The championship record held by Ezekiel Kemboy. Four times he has won this race. Three silver medals. This is his eighth appearance. Will it be an eighth successive medal? Ezekiel Kenboy lining up, Evan Jaeger, fastest man in the world this year, and Conceslas Capruto aiming to become the world champion after two silvers. We will be back to that start line very soon. La Villani, first attempt at 5 metres and 82, looking to keep the clean scorecard. No, it's his first failure of the evening. He'll be back for a second attempt. Frenchman on the hunt for a title that has so far eluded him. Here's the lineup then for the final, the men's 3,000 meter steeplechase. Is this the last instalment in the career of Ezekiel Kemboy? Will Evan Yeager of the United States become the first non Kenyan born winner for 30 years? Or can the Olympic champion, Conceslas Capruto, win the last title missing from his collection. So let's take a look at the field of the men's 3,000 metres. Great atmosphere here in the Olympic Stadium. It is absolutely packed. Mehadeen Makissi on the outside, then Dariba, Chemotai, Hughes, Pan-American champion, Araptini, very good youngster. And Sufayn El Bakali, the Moroccan, just off the podium in Rio last year, only 21, big tall man, he's secured a massive PB this year. Tabti, now the Olympic champion, twice a silver medalist behind Ezekiel Kemboy. This is the only one missing from his collection. The question mark is over his ankle. Has he recovered from problems earlier this season? Stanley Kebene. Good performance at the World Cross in Kampala earlier this year, third in the Monaco Diamond League. 
Koval, the second of the two Frenchmen. Jairus Birech, 10th fastest man in history. Commonwealth silver medalist just off the podium in Beijing. Then Saboka, one of three Ethiopians in the race. And what about this? Can Evan Yeager become the history maker for the United States? No American has ever stood on the podium in this event. He's the fastest man in the world this year and the Olympic silver medalist. And are we saying goodbye to the greatest steeplechaser in history? He hasn't definitively said he's retiring, but if he gets the result he wants tonight, that could be it for the greatest. Wale of Ethiopia on the inside. So many protagonists can play a role here, and there are so many great men who deserve to win. Only one will triumph. Here we go. The final of the men's 3,000 meter steeplechase is underway. McKissie Benabad coming wide there and just blocking the two Kenyans and deciding now he's going to take it on with Birech tucked in behind him and Conceslas Capruto, the Olympic champion, on his shoulder. A Raptony there. Performed really well back in Daegu as a youngster wearing that familiar yellow strip of Uganda. But it is Conceslas Capruto who's leading in the early stages. Well, not very fast, is it? They're bunching up here. No one's decided to take it up, which is surprising. I'd have thought out of all the Kenyans that someone would do it. You see Berich coming through now. Wally just behind him, so no one is really, really pushing on as fast as we'd expect in a steeplechase here of this caliber. The Kenyans, though, obviously like to get out in front. They see this as their own event. Anybody else challenging that would probably be a major problem. And Steve, just on that note, what a good season Evan Yeager has had. And we spoke during the marathon about what an important role guys like him can play in proving that it's not just the East Africans who can dominate these distance events. We will return and continue this debate in just a second, but we've got to get back to the pole vault. We're reaching a crucial stage. Well, it's gone up to 5.89. This is Lysek's first attempt. He fell 5.82 at the first time of asking. He's one of three athletes that have passed at this height. Strategy. First attempt then at 5.89 for Lysek. Oh, yes! Puts himself into the gold medal position. Puts the pressure on Wojciechowski, puts the pressure on Lavillany, and of course onto Kendricks and Zoo. That puts him into the lead. So, Zoo of China. Five meters and 89. Hendricks is yet to come. Wojciechowski and Lavillany, as I mentioned, have also now passing their attempts at 82 to join this height of 589. Can Zhu join Lysek? Oh no. First time failure. Silver medal position, though, still for Zhu of China. He'll come back at 5.89. Birac leads from Conceslas Kipruto. Kipruto, the Olympic champion. Wale up towards the front. And that looks like it's Saboka now taking the lead. One of the other Ethiopians. Saboka, 23 years of age, and there's still no move from Ezekiel Kemboy. Well, usually though, Robbie's at the back and he just comes through, but this time he's in mixing it with the rest of the athletes, which means he thinks he's in with a chance, but he's not going to try too much to take a gamble on staying way back. Once again, we have to dip back to the pole vault. We will be back with the steeple very soon. Well, the steeple chasers are going to run round the top bend, which is where Sam Kendricks will be. Jaeger. Is representing the USA in that final. Sam Kendricks, 589. This is his first attempt. Flew over all the heights previously. Currently in a joint silver medal position with Zhu of China, who's just failed his first attempt at 589. So, the American, the world leader, 
First attempt at 5.89, can he join Lysek? Oh, yes! Oh, yes, the stars and stripes. Over 5 metres and 89, puts himself into the gold medal position. Perfect scorecard so far. Kendricks celebrating. And there's another American on track for something important here. Evan Yeager leads a Rapton. He had to stop to tie his shoelace, which is an absolute disaster for him. He's way off the back now. But Evan Yeager hit the front when they went round with four laps to go. He is the Olympic silver medalist, clears that barrier well. All three of the Kenyans are tucked in behind him. Concessus Capruto in second, Kenboy third, Birech fourth. Can Evan Jaeger finally produce a medal here in the World Championship context? He's come close on so many occasions, but nearly always runs out of steam with the Kenyans behind him. And it's America 1, Kenya 2 and 3, as El Bacali of Morocco starts to get in the mix as well. Jaeger's doing a great job, really. He's pushing it on. He knows that he hasn't perhaps got that lightning finish that someone like Ken Boy has got, who's in third at the moment. So he's pushing it on, and he's doing the right thing, because look at this, this group is down to four now. Jaeger leads. Capruto, the Olympic champion, in second. Then comes El Bacali. There you can see Jaeger, just on the left of frame there. El Bacali in third. Kenboy four. That may well be Cabaney of the United States in fifth place, with the three Ethiopians now drifting back. And Jaeger has just opened up a couple of meters here. This is getting to the crucial part of the race. And what an epic battle we will have now, because four into three doesn't go. Well, Jaeger is doing all the destructive work at the moment out in front. And if he carries on like this, he might even lose Kenboy. Kenboy looks as if he's struggling. Oh, what a shame this would be. But you never know with that man, he might come back over the last lap. But Jaeger knows what he's doing. He's pushing hard and he's being destructive. Are we witnessing a changing of the guard here? Kenboy has lost touch with the leading three. There he is on the right of picture. No American has ever stood on the podium. There's Kenboy in fourth. No Americans ever won a medal in this event. And no non-Kenyan has won this title for 30 years, not since Francesco Panetta back in Rome in 87. And Jaeger's giving himself a brilliant chance. He is working all the way, and there is a gap, two metres or so. Al Bacardi behind, though, is struggling. You can see that, and he's hit that barrier, and it makes it worse. We're coming up now to just one lap in the steeple. They take the bell in the final of the men's 3,000 metre steeplechase. Evan Jaeger on his way to what he hopes will be a piece of history for him and the United States. But the Olympic champion is still there, and El Bacali running well in third. Kipruto looks dangerous, though. Jaeger has done all the hard work. Kipruto, now look at that, a change of gear. Is it going to be destructive enough, or is there still something in the legs of El Bacali or Jaeger? There's still the water jump to go. Conceslas Kipruto, the Olympic champion, twice a world championship silver medalist this is the only one missing from his collection but look at El Bacali he's been a bit awkward over the barriers Kenya from Morocco Jaeger of the United States these three are away and clear you suspect for the medals can Conceslas Capruto win the only one missing from his collection Mackissi Benabat trying to close for four Conceslas Capruto playing games with his opponent Capruto wins, El Bacali takes the silver, and it is a piece of history for Evan Jaeger, the first American ever to finish on the World Championship podium over the 3,000 metre steeplechase. It's a changing of the guard as Ezekiel Kenboy jogs across the line. His glory days are over, but Conceslas Capruto proved tonight that it is he who now rules the world for Kenya in this event. A wonderful silver for El Bacali, and finally, Evan Jaeger has a world championship medal. It's bronze for him. Oh, what a great race. Jaeger, really, you've got to give a hat. Giving your hats off to that man. He did everything he had to do. Ken Boy, though, 
unfortunately didn't produce what we thought would be a spectacular end to his career. But there we are. Great run from all those athletes there. And in the end, Al Bacali just didn't have it in his legs to beat this man. Well, who does, really? Kiprutu looks so strong, all, even smiling as he came down that last 50 metres or so, saying to the crowd, I am still the best, I am here. Can you take another title in the steeplechase? That was a great win for him, Steve, because Jaeger really took it to him, and there were these question marks over whether Concessus Kipruto had recovered from those ankle problems. Listen to this as we watch El Bacali. He's absolutely overwhelmed at getting the silver. He just missed the medal in Rio last year. He's having the season of his life. And Jaeger, I hope he is celebrating because he's had a medal at the Olympics, but he's never done it at the World Championship here. Conceslas Capruto, world youth champion, world junior champion, Olympic champion, and now he's world senior champion. He has completed the collection. And what a fine championship this is turning out to be for the Americans. Not just in the sprints, but we've seen Jenny Simpson get a medal in the 15, Craig in the women's marathon, and now Jaeger in the 3,000 metre steeplechase. Great race. Yeah, it was a great race because it was all over the last 200 metres or so. And that water, water chase jump sometimes proves uh, really, really difficult when your legs are tired. But those three went across it pretty well. Well, I don't think this man can actually believe it, but he ran a great race. And uh, in the end, OK, he's had to get uh, the silver medal. And Al Bacali, my word, what a run that was from him. Unexpected, really. And, and now the silver medalist at the World Championships. So, Wojciechowski. Final attempt, 5.89. Oh, well... He had a first-time failure at 5 metres and 82, so he passed and decided to pick up the attempt at 5.89. So two failures at that height. He'll finish fifth in this World Championships. So equal fourth in Rio. Gives a little kiss to the crowd. But fifth position for the Polish athlete. As I mentioned, Renola Villani. Had a first time failure at 5 metres and 82, then he passed up to 5 metres and 89 also. And he had a first time failure, or a second failure if you like, at that height, so he's got one more vault to come. And he's currently in fourth position, the world record holder. Sam Kendricks leading the way, first time clearance at 5 metres and 89. He's in gold at the moment. Lysek has also cleared 5 metres and 89, he's in the silver medal position. And Zhu of China, two failures so far at 5 metres and 89. He's in bronze. So, Renault Lavillani, the outright world record holder with 6 metres and 16 indoors from 2014. London Olympic gold, Rio silver, World Championship silver in 2013 and three bronzes. The one piece of metal missing is the big G from a world championships. It's the first time he's come into a major championships without the heavy burden of being the favourite. His daughter Iris was born just a matter of three weeks ago. Relona Villani in fourth position to stay in the pole vault final here in London, five metres and 89. Beautiful clearance, five metres and 89. Cometh the hour, cometh Renault La Villani. Look at that, he's absolutely pumped. A season's best, he arrived here having only vaulted five metres and 87. Well, the men's pole vault final continues and La, La, La Villani is still in the mix. Conceslas Capruto celebrating long before the finish line wild eyes and that was a face of delight he knows he's now completed the set Conceslas Capruto has won every title available to him the Olympic champion is now the world champion El Bacali had tears of delight for the silver and Evan Jaeger 
finally an American on the podium in this event. Bronze for him. We still have the men's 800 meters and 400 meters to come. Plenty of drama left at the climax of day five. Now, though, we're getting the medal ceremony for that fantastic uh, javelin throw. Bernard Anselm, I don't know if council member, will be sending the medals to the ladies. And what a great competition for the Chinese women in this event. Liu 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 with that throw of 65-25. Those throws coming in the latter stages of the competition from the Chinese athletes. Pushing the likes of Kolak and Sugu into fourth and fifth. And even better from a, I suppose, from a Chinese point of view, Ling Wei Li, 66-25, a personal best throw. Silver medal. China, silver and bronze in the World Championships. And then perhaps the greatest javelin thrower in this event, perhaps of all time. Double Olympic champion and now the world champion, Nabora Spatakova of the Czech Republic with that marvellous second round throw which really did damage to everybody else, 66-76. Well, she's been coming good all through the season and then to end it perhaps with the gold medal is the perfect culmination. Celebrations went on and on and on. She's still celebrating, she's tearing up already. Ladies and gentlemen, the national anthem of the Czech Republic. Well, she sang along all the way through the national anthem, and that is Czech, the Czech Republic's first medal at these championships. Wow, absolutely wonderful. Double Olympic champion, world record holder, and now the world champion. Zoo of China in the men's pole vault. This height of 5 metres and 89 is the first height to give him any trouble here this evening. This is his third and final attempt. A national record of 5.82. He's been pushed down to fourth because Renola Villani went over 5 metres and 89. So, final attempt for the Chinese athlete. No, not to be this evening. But 5 metres and 82. The huge season's best. He arrived here in London having only vaulted 570. So a national record for Zoo of China, but he finishes in fourth place in this men's pole vault final. Hendricks in pole position. He's in the gold medal position after his clearance at 589 and a clear scorecard. Silver at the moment is Wojta Lysek of Poland. And the bronze medal position is Renault Labilani. 
So, three athletes remain. The next height will be 5 metres and 95. It will be Lysek of Poland in the silver medal position. will be first up to take an attempt. This would be a lifetime best once again for the Polish athlete. We'll keep you up to date with the next height of 5 metres and the 95. Eight, but on the track is the two-lap final. The penultimate event on the track, the 800 metres. A wide open race, this one. There is no David Radisha, but we do have eight world-class men, all of whom want to fill that void. Steve Ovet, it's hard to call which way this one's going. Yes, it is, but I have to laugh. The boys ran straight out, didn't they? Not like the sprinters. The sprinters had their own time there, didn't they? Took their time and walked out. The 800 meter guys, let's get up, let's get on with it. Yeah, it's hard to call. This is a pretty close race. There's some guys that like to lead from the front. People like McBride, maybe Bet, the Kenyan. And there's others like Adam Schott that like to come back. Langford we saw finishing fast. So it is going to be a very, very strange race. We'll have to wait and see. There's Bet. This is the man that should run really well in this race. But up until now, in qualifying, hasn't looked totally confident with his ability. I guess we do have to remember he's still only 19 years of age. World Junior Champion. Is this the day that Nigel Amos upgrades the silver he won in this stadium so magnificently behind Rhodesia five years ago? Commonwealth champion and African champion since then, but he's also had a tough time with injuries, Steve. It hasn't been a smooth five years since he won that silver as a teenager. No, no, and it hasn't. So, that, as I say, that means that everything in this race is up for grabs. I think most of these guys, I think, are quite confident that they maybe get up there in the medals, but it's how the race is run. As I said before, you have the likes of McBride and Brett that might, that might just push it on. And if that's the case, the people like Bosse, Amos, uh, and Aman might follow. And then you've got the likes of Shot, maybe, and Langford, as I said. That's the character of the race that should emerge. Whether it does that or not, is it is we'll have to wait and see. Well, Nigel Amos representing Botswana. Thankfully, he has not been struck by the illness bug, but has meant Isaac McQuala will not be in the 400 metres, which comes after this. There is Amos. We've got the likes of Adam Shot so often sprinting to glory or a major medal in the last 50 metres. Brandon McBride in the foreground there, just bending down for his shoes. He ran really well in the semi-finals. Very aggressive, the Canadian. Thiago Andre on the outside. It's a brilliant field, and in the absence of Radisha, it's a big, big opportunity for a global title. Mohamed Aman, we haven't said much about him yet, the Ethiopian, just at the top of your picture world champion in Moscow but arguably not in that kind of form PB 142.3 he hasn't gone inside 145 this season here we go then with the final of the men's 800 meters David Radisha producing that world record here five years ago what kind of drama will we have this time in London over two laps here is the official lineup. The world champion from four years ago, Mohamed Aman, starts on the inside. Pierre Ambrose Boss has been so close to the major medals for the last few years. Amos got the silver in London. Will it be gold this time? Adam Schott, so such a good performer from Poland. Let's take a look at the full field. Thiago Andre starts on the outside, just missed the medal at the World Juniors a few years ago, over 8 and 1500 metres, in PB shape this year. Will a fast time be necessary or will it be a fast finish from a tactical genius that does the business? Adam Schott, twice a European champion, silver medalist in Beijing, if it's slow he will definitely feature at the end. Brandon McBride national champion but really good in the semis he's aggressive and he's not afraid to take it out Kipyegon Bet, the reigning world junior champion just 19 years of age can he fly the Kenyan flag in the absence of Rhodesia Nigel Amos the second fastest man in the world this year silver medal in London this track has produced great moments for him is there another one to come of a higher color 
Pierre Ambrose Boss just missed a medal in Rio with four, was fifth in Beijing. And Kyle Langford of Great Britain. What an opportunity for him. Grew up with his parents running a chip shop in Watford. And Mohamed Oman, the former world champion, can he recapture glory days of the past? Well, Carl Langford actually trains on my home track down there in Brighton. He's coached by Chris Big, an old friend of mine that uh, used to be one of my club mates. So there's some connection, I suppose, for me and Carl in this race. The final of the men's 800 metres. It is wide open, a massive opportunity for one of the eight men here. Here we go then. We have no idea how this race is going to pan out. And will it be fast from the start? Yes, is the answer. Because McBride, as we saw in all of these races so far, likes to run hard. But the man to follow, and the perfect man to follow, is Nigel Amos in the blue. McBride leading out, Amos in the blue, and coming right from the outside there, Andre of Brazil. And there was a real clash there, Steve, between Kipyegon Fett and Nigel Amos. It was such a big tussle that Amos was not completely off balance there for a little bit. And, and they've clashed again. We're talking about the men who are now running on either side of Andre of Brazil. But Bride, though, poised and strong at the front. Yeah, that's just the way he likes to run. This is the time, is if it's close to 50 or 56 7. It's very respectable. This third 20 metres is where McBride's got to do the damage because look how they're still gathering behind him. Amos is there, Andre is there, Beck moving out as you'd expect. Just behind them, Amar, right at the very back, shot. He's got a lot of work to do, but that's exactly what he likes to do. Well, McBride has been passed, and look at Boss coming wide on the outside. McBride is going backwards, and still Nigel Amos is getting involved with the tussles with Beck. Boss, who has twice just missed the medal in this event, is striking for glory for France. Bet is beginning to rock and roll a little bit. Amos in third. Shot is trying to close, but what a run this is by the Frenchman. Boss is coming wide on the outside. It's shot on the outside, but Boss is going to win from shot and bet. Langford just, just missing out on a medal for Great Britain. Boss can't believe it, but when he hit the front, he had the gap he needed. And it is about the acceleration. Fourth in Rio, fifth in Beijing, but he is number one here in London tonight, the Frenchman. He gave that absolutely everything. He almost can't believe that he won it. What a race and what a finish. Well, that was a race, wasn't to remember, really. But Brian did all he had to do, but he does run out of steam, the Canadian, over the second half of the race. Boss took it up. That's what you've got to do. If you're confident and you're strong, give it a go. Just get out there and work hard. Shot came from about 30 or 40 metres back, and he was in a different race. He came from nowhere and ended up in the silver medal. Langford, fourth, nearly getting that bronze medal. So, so close. Personal best all over the place, really, for Lang well, Langford, anyway. Season's best for the other two in front. Wow, what a race. Let's just watch that replay again. Look how far Langford and Schott are behind. Langford, oh, he's in a different race. Boss is gone. He's done everything perfect. You can see that now. The others are trying to catch him. Look at the, these two coming through now. Schott and Langford. Langford has got a beautiful start, but he just leaves it so, so late. The others are dying on their feet. Amos is dying. Boss can't believe it. He thinks maybe someone's going to overtake him, but they didn't. Schott gets second place. And in the end, what a disappointment that uh, Beck just beat Langford for the, the bronze medal. But what an achievement here for Pierre Ambrose Boss after just missing out twice before in the global races. And he just took that by the scruff of the neck, Steve. He did 
you know, he didn't wait. He decided, right, I'm going for this. I'm going to be bold. This is mine. What a way to do it. It is, but it was an open race. We said before, anyone can win this. And in that sort of race, when you haven't got the likes, you know, of the great David Reduce, you're taking it up and getting close to the world. If you haven't got that sort of man in the race, then it is open. If you take the opportunity and you give yourself a, a chance, well, what have you got to lose? And this man did exactly that, and his chance was rewarded with a, with a gold medal. Shot, again, I think left it too late. Really did. Langford again, I'm not sure what he was doing there at the back, but obviously disappointment because I think he could have got third, if not silver. Well, Boss was so emotional at the end of that race. Boss is the champion of the world. Shot once again the silver. So, we've had one glorious moment for a Frenchman. Is there going to be another? Hello, La Villani. Five metres and 95. Lysek has failed. Kendricks has failed. He's in bronze. Can he be the first man over? Oh, so close. So, so close. Well, arrived in London with a season's best of 5 metres and 87. That's been surpassed with his second time clearance at 5.89. So, three athletes, three medals, still to be decided. But at the moment, it's Kendricks, Lysek, La Villani. They'll all come back for a second attempt at 5.95, which would be, as I mentioned, an outdoor lifetime best for Lysek. But the clock, they have a little bit longer, just the three athletes remaining in this men's pole vault final. And Wade Van Niekerk sits patiently and waits for potentially the start of a golden double here in London. The final event on the track is the men's 400 metre final. Pierre Ambrose Boas took his opportunity in magnificent style. Shot once again, sprinting through late for the silver, and bet just hung on from the fast-finishing Britain, Kyle Langford, who is at least rewarded with a lifetime best here in the Olympic Stadium. What a race. So, the second attempt at 5 metres and 95 start. Witalysek of Poland in the silver medal position. Six metres indoors. Personal best already outdoors with that clearance of five metres and 89. But it's about getting over five metres and 95. Second attempt for the current silver medalist. No. He didn't have as much speed, as much zap on the runway going in for that second attempt at 5.95. So with his first time clearance at 5 metres and 89, sits in the silver medal position. In the final of the men's 400 metres, there's Stephen Gardner of the Bahamas, there's Wade Van Niekerk, the world record holder. Making their way into the stadium for the men's 400 metre final. The South African will start in lane number six. The defending world champion, the Olympic champion. They're being called out in lane order before their big introduction to the crowd here in London. A sellout crowd again. Nigh on 700,000 tickets have been sold at this World Championships. The lucky ones are in here tonight. Here's Sam Kendricks. Second attempt at 5 metres and 95. Has a little word with himself. over that six meter magical barrier in the season when he's hoping to become a world champion the USA have won this title before with Brad Walker in 2007 in Osaka Hendricks wants to bring it home again for the USA second attempt at five meters and 95 is in the gold medal position no so a second time failure, but with a clear scorecard all the way from 5 metres and 50 to 5 metres and 89, you can see there, he's in the position that he wants to be. Makes 
the adjustments, writes it down. And very shortly, Ranola Villani will come for his second attempt at five metres and 89. You see Kendricks. Slim figure, strong figure. He said if he could compete in any other sport, it would be equestrian. His love of horses is big. At this moment in time, he's concentrating on trying to win the world title here in London. Do you know what I like about Kendricks, Catherine? He's a really good sportsman because I remember in one of the Diamond Leagues earlier this year, it may in fact have been in Paris when La Villani was, was having a few problems, Kendricks went to the crowd and motioned for everyone to start clapping. He seems like a really generous spirited guy. Well, he is. We talk about the multi eventers having wonderful camaraderie. The pole vaulters at this moment in time in 2017 are getting on wonderfully well. And indeed, when Sam Kendricks went over that six meter height to the Sacramento at the US Championships, which he won, the first person to text him, Welcome to the club, brother. We've got no level in here. So, second attempt at five meters and 95. He's in the bronze medal position. attempt oh yes he knows how close it was so each athlete Lysek Kendricks and La Villani have one more attempt at five meters and 95 we'll see if they all decide to take it because at the moment it is Sam Kendricks in the gold medal position so the camera zooms in on a beautiful shot of the London Stadium the final event of the evening after a wonderful men's 3,000 meter steeplechase, a superb men's 800 meters, it's time for the quarter milers in the final of the men's 400 meters. Tebe of Botswana is coming through, Gay of Jamaica, Wade Van Nieker, Allen of Jamaica, Gardner of the Bahamas, Haroon of Qatar, Curly of the USA. There's your world record holder, Wade Van Niekerk of South Africa. The world leader, 43.62. The world record holder, 43.03. On Olympic gold, broke the world record from the outside line in Rio last year. Saw nobody and became Olympic champion. He's looking to defend his world title here. And Lysak of Poland is looking for a third time clearance at 5 metres and 95. He's in the silver medal position. One more attempt. He was third at the World Indoor Championships last year. He's a major championship performer. One final attempt at five meters and 95. No, well, it was a better attempt than his second attempt at 595, but he bows out the competition currently in the silver medal position. So the 24 year old will wait. He'll wait for Kendricks, and he'll wait for La Villani. It really has been a wonderful competition. I mentioned Renault La Villani not having the pressure for the first time in many years of delivering a gold medal in the pole vault. They've battled all season. And Lysak has been rewarded with a World Championship medal. got to confirm the colours and where they're going to go. So the American Sam Kendricks 
when you've only started failing at five meters and 95 you're in a good place he's in the best place he's in the gold medal position can he put it a little bit further out the reach of Renault Lavillenie? Final attempt at 5.95, the event leader. Oh! Yes, he can! Outstanding vaulting from Sam Kendricks. Well, the US Army Reserve wearing the stars and stripes. That's his dad in the crowd. His father, Scott Kendricks, coaches his son, and that is a wonderful clearance at five meters and 95. Could be the gold medal winning vault. He was in the gold medal position, but that is a vault that could crown him the world champion. Perfect Only Renault Lavillenie can deny. Perfect technique. Well, at this stage, La Villani has the opportunity of passing Kath. I don't know where he's going to do that, but we'll have to wait and see. He, I, think, I think he will, and it's coming through on our computer. He's passing at 5.95 and going to 6 metres and 1. It's sensible, because then he's got a chance of winning gold. Oh, men's pole vault will continue. So, René La Villani, the Olympic champion in 2012 in the field, and this is the Olympic champion on the track over 400 metres. Wade Van Niekerk will start in lane number six. No Isaac Mukwala of Botswana out with a sickness bug. So lane seven will be vacant. Disappointing for Mukwala. World record, 43.03. Championship record belongs to Michael Johnson, who had the world record before Wade Van Nieker took it off him. So there's your lineup for the men's 400 meter final. It's about winning a gold medal here tonight for Wade Van Niekerk. As he starts his quest for the two and 400 meter double. Comfortably through the heats so far of the 200 meters. But here's your lineup for the men's 400 meter final. Babaloke Tebe of Botswana, the world number five, 44.02 seconds in Lausanne, African champion last year. Lane eight, Demishke of Jamaica, second at the Jamaican championships this year, 44.54. That's the personal best from the 24 year old this year. Into lane number six, the Olympic champion, the world record holder, the world leader. Sub 10 seconds, sub 20 seconds, and 43.03 at his best. Wade Van Niekerk starts in six. Lane number five, the world number six this year, Nathan Allen from Jamaica. Second leg for the Jamaican relay team, which won Olympic silver last year. This man looked good in qualifying. Stephen Gardner of the Bahamas. Cut his Bahamian record down to 43.89 in the semi-final, the fastest qualifier. Lane number three, Abdelayla Haroun of Qatar, the new world junior champion, the 20-year-old, 44.27 at his best. And completing the lineup from the USA, Fred Curley, seventh on the all-time list, having run 43.70 seconds this season. The men's 400 meter final. Wade Van Niekerk of South Africa starts in lane number six. Has anybody got anything to touch the South African? Can Gardner reproduce the form of the semi final to push the world record holder in lane six? The final of the men's 400 meters. So the roar goes around the stadium for the final of the men's 400 metres. Gardner of the Bahamas going well in lane number four. 
Van Niekerk going well in lane number six. Curly moving well, the American, in lane number two. But round the top bend, Garza, a slight advantage of Bahamian in lane number four. But look at the afterburners, Wade Van Niekerk put his foot down in lane number six. He's going to swing into the home straight, the world leader. The South Africans running well. Tebe and Botswana in lane number nine running well. Gardner on a charge. But nobody can stop the world record holder. Unofficially 43.98 seconds. Wade Van Nieker defends his title in lane number six. Well, he's the champion again. And there was some competition, potentially at one point in that race. But Van Nieker takes the gold. Gardner for the Bahamas picks up the silver. And Haroon from Qatar in a season's best picks up the bronze. Well, no doubting it really. This man was superb. Ran the race really well. As you say, that third hundred meters, cat, he really just blitz it. Because up until then, there wasn't much in it. That's, that, that's his strength. That third hundred meters, he comes off of that four or five meters ahead. And the others just try and catch it. This man, Haroon, came off an absolute train at the end. I've never seen anybody finish as fast as he did in a 400 meters. Yeah, watch, watch Haroon here. Because Curly has given his best early on in the race. He's absolutely miles back at the moment, the man from Qatar. Van Nieker really strong in the closing stages. Gardner was tying up a little bit. Tebe thought he'd got the bronze, but Haroon finished like a steam train. And he has defended his title and done so in style. Well, Sam Kendricks gave a round of applause when Wade Van Niekerk crossed the line. First attempt at six metres and one. He's in the gold medal position, the American. Oh, well, he's gone over six metres this year, so it would be a lifetime best and a new world lead. But Renaud Labillini has passed after two failures at five metres and 95. So we'll take a first and final attempt at six metres and one. But the flags are being draped on the 400 metre athletes. Wade Van Niekerk, gold number one. Now he'll attack the 200. Yeah, that was a great performance from Van Niekerk. We can't expect a, you know, a world record every time he steps on the track. And it is cold tonight. But he just seemed to run that so smoothly and under such control. Gold again then for Wade Van Niekerk, 43.98 seconds. It's not about the time tonight, it was about defending his title. Gardner picks up the silver and Haroon, with his fast finish, season's best, picks up the bronze. So the only action to conclude this evening is this men's pole vault final. Sam Kendricks, gold medal position. Third time clearance at 5 metres and 95. Renaud Lavillini is currently in the bronze medal position with his second time clearance of 5 metres and 89. Hendrik Prowls. <laughs> Lysek's getting some photos taken, deservedly so. He went over 5 metres and 89 at the first time of asking. He's in the silver medal position, Lysek. There's only one chance left for Renaud Lavillini after passing his third and final effort at 5.95. How magical would it be for him to win, potentially continue to be in a chance to win a World Championship gold that he hasn't got when he has the stadium to himself, London to himself, and he's won the Olympic here, Olympic title here before. He has, but it's a, it's a big ask. He's got one attempt. And even if he does it, Kendricks can come back again with two more attempts. So this is crunch time. And this is exactly the scenario that the pole vault finished in last year in Rio with nothing else left going on in the stadium. And La Villani came out on the wrong side of that one against the Brazilian. To stay in with a chance, he's got one attempt at six metres and one, Renault La Villani. Not to be tonight for the Frenchman. He gives the crowd a round of applause. A bronze medal for Renaud Lavillani. A silver medal for Poitou Lysik of Poland. And Sam Kendricks, 
the only man to get over five meters and 95 becomes the world champion the american well la villainy a bronze in 2009 bronze in 2011 a share of a bronze in 2015 it's another major championship medal for the french athlete to add to the silver he had in 2013 but look at the delight understandably of Lysak of Poland. He picks up the silver medal of Sam Kendricks. Well, Brad Walker won this title for the USA in 2007. And there he is. I think he's saying, I think, I think he's saying, Kath, what do I do? Do I go on? Yeah. Do I put another height up? He looked at his dad and his coach and went, am I okay? Am I done? Am I good? Can I enjoy? Can I celebrate? <laughs> What a run from Van Niekerk. And what a great championship it's turning out to be for the South Africans. Having taken the long jump title with Manyonga, Pastor Semenya got a bronze in the 15 and still has the eight to come. He's not going to replace Usain Bolt because he's a different character, but in talent terms, he is very, very, very special. Dare I say a world championship final was fairly easy well look, yeah, at, the, I, look yeah. at look at the gap and that, that's what four or five meters and he's, he's really just easing through it's very cold here tonight yeah and look at him look he's easing down now and there you go fairly comfortable for the man who is the world record holder the way he ran it his burst of acceleration at 120 meters for me was outstanding he put a massive amount of work in coming into the home straight and then just came home it was a wonderful run is in super form as we'd expect and Gardner well we wondered if he could back up his national record of 43.89 from the semi-finals he couldn't quite run that fast in the final but he picks up a silver medal for the Bahamas that's a nice shot <laughs> I guess we've also got to remember it, it, it's a fantastic victory for Van Nieker once again proving he absolutely has the temperament to deliver when the pressure's on you bring a fit Karani James back into the mix you bring Makwala back into the mix, and there could be real fireworks in this event over the next couple of seasons. Well, the South African fans are dancing. His coach, Hans Botha, will be delighted. Part one of the job is done. Look at that, absolutely beautiful. The best of all time. And as you say, though, look at that there. When we were talking about Haroon and how far he came back from that shot, so sh that shot shows it absolutely perfectly. I think it, I think he was last by about three or four meters coming off that bend. He finished faster than I've ever seen anybody finish a, a 400 meter race. Van Niekerk, now a three-time global champion, and just to underline how well he peaks for the big occasion the two fastest times in his life Beijing for his first world title Rio for the world record he always gets it right when it counts well you mentioned athletics uh, potentially keep asking the question of the next superstar and as you say Rob he's got the talent that was brilliant tonight well, he's got, he has got the talent. He hasn't got, I don't think, Usain's character or personality or the way that he just gets the crowd involved. And that, that's not necessary, really. You've just got to do the job. You've just got to win. There's got to be maybe one or two other guys or women that come to the fore. So we have a great spread of talent in our sport. Exactly. Not just resting on one man or one woman. Exactly. Not after the next Usain Bolt. We're just after the next superstars in our sport. And there's one there. Oh, well, Renault La Villani. He'll look to go home to his new daughter Iris with another World Championship medal. And there's confirmation then. Sam Kendricks takes gold for the USA. Lysak picks up the silver for Poland. And Renault La Villani picks up the bronze. And perhaps a different context for the Villainese medal this time. He was absolutely heartbroken with the manner in which he had silver last year in Rio. But following a difficult season by his own standards, 
no wonder he was emotional there, celebrating with, I think, his uh, younger brother. So it's been a whistle-stop night, and we just want to bring you up to speed with the qualification in the shot put. Not too many women making it through automatically, but the Jamaican, Thomas Dodd, remember, needing 18.30, and she was one of the athletes who made it through automatically. US collegiate champion this year, didn't qualify for the Beijing World Championships. She's done so here in London, and she will return for the final tomorrow night. Good effort there from the Jamaican. Just missed the medal in the Pan American Games, fine edition of the Games in Toronto a couple of years ago. So Thomas Dodd, one of the automatic qualifiers. Well, all the big names made it through, apart from one. Bunch, who was the third best putter in the world this year, falling shy. There you can see her name, just 17.39. So Arcanjo of Brazil took the last spot with 17.79. Disappointment there for the American, but her teammate, the Olympic champion Michelle Carter, will be in that final. That's coming up tomorrow. Well, we hope you've enjoyed the action. It has been an absolutely cracking night here at the track. Definitely the coldest day we've had so far. Stadium just beginning to empty out. Three really intriguing finals to round off our evening with the three steeple. The men's eight and then Van Nieker once again underlining himself as the number one star over the one lap event. It wasn't a world record, but it was still a great performance. And he'll be back tomorrow night, the men's semi finals of the 200 meters. Every night, a nice handful of wonderful finals in the track and in the field and it will continue tomorrow. Shot put women's final, as Roth mentioned, and also the 400 meter hurdles final tomorrow for men. So after the 400 meter hurdle finals, the night will end with the women's 400 meter final. Yeah, what a race that will be with Miller Weibo taking on Alison Felix, uh, reigniting their battle from Rio last year. Well, if you've missed anything that we've enjoyed tonight, sit back and relax. Here's a little reminder of the drama that's just unfolded.
here's an update on the medal table. The United States, 11 medals in all, three golds. And the Kenyans up to three now after Conceslas Kipruto's fabulous win in the 3,000 metre steeplechase. Great Britain still chasing that seemingly elusive second medal. Langford fourth again as Muir was fourth in the 15 last night. Colombia with that silver medal with the Bargwin in the triple jump. And the Ivory Coast. Well, Talu will be hoping that she can add to their medal tally in the women's 200 metres. She's through to the semi finals. Good performance in the heats. Well, what a night, Steve Ovet and Catherine Merry. Van Niekerk delivering once again. Kendricks rose above all the others. Kipruto in the steeplechase and, and Pierre bossing that 800. Took his opportunity, Steve. Nice one. Yeah, you're bossing it. I like that one. Yeah, boss did very well. Shot, though, left it too late, I think. But a great run from him, nevertheless. Bet there. And then Langford, the Brit, just nearly missing out on the bronze medal. But also, I think, the changing of the guard in the men's steeplechase. Ken Boy handing it over to Kip Rutu. And in the fields, Patakova, well, I think she's still in disbelief. She might be in disbelief till next week. A wonderful performance by her. And, of course, the men's pole vault there and Sam Kendricks. Yeah, a brilliant night once again. Well, we really appreciate you keeping us company here in the Olympic Stadium. This great championship promised much, and so far it is delivering. Please do come and join us again, same place, tomorrow night. Goodbye.